and welcome to the Computer Game Show. My name's David Turner. I'm here with Matt Murray. Hello there. Sean Bell. Hello there. And James Farley. Hello. Oh, there. Fucking hell, um, James. Come on. <laughs> I'm, trying to, just I'm trying to add this new story you just asked me to. I'm trying to figure out where do oh, I put it in the running you, order. Just Rattled stick it you. in, mate. No one cares. Who went full Nels this week, Dave? I'll tell you who went full Nels. It was Alan M. Nash, Aaron Patrick, and Anthony Okinson. That's right. We're supported by the beautiful people of Patreon. Patron? Patron. Why have I, Why has that gone? Why is that? Why Why am I questioning that now? I've said it a million what times. What's, what's just happened? Are you all right? I don't know, mate. I don't know. I'm so tired. You can support us by going to www.patreon.com forward slash TCGS. There are bonus podcasts. There are talks overs. Get involved and help us out. Keep this show alive because we'll fucking kill it. Right. Okay. <laughs> and before we get onto feedback from last week's show, I've got a question that's been running through my mind and I need you to give me a straight up honest answer right you're yeah. probably my three closest mates just be straight up with me no bullshit no being nice nothing <laughs> have i got a bad re- reputation when it comes to recommendations <laughs> what do you mean this is like when i say oh you should do this like or yeah. should listen to this or watch this or whatever are you like no i'll give that one a uh, i mean so i'm very bad at taking music recommendations Due to, well, I mean, the, well, that's the first. It's funny you should go there straight away, right? Because okay. that's the first thing that made me question things, okay. right? And that was probably about two years ago, where I'd go to either you guys or another group of mates. Yeah. I should listen to this, right? And they just it was radio silence, and then you never heard about it again. <laughs> and I just, I think what I started to realise was actually my taste in music's not great. Right, and that's not me like going wobbly. wobbly. <laughs> I'm okay with that. I'm comfortable with that. I find music very, uh, very subjective. Obviously, yeah, yeah. so I'm fine with that. Right, people, not many people like the music that I like, and I like some weird shit, and I'm I'm cool with that. I'm fine. Right, mm. but I'm I'm assuming none of you listen to the podcast that I was banging on about a week. Which one? <laughs> Gossip mongers. Oh, that one. Oh no, yeah. I have been meaning to though, because that clip you sent us was unbelievable. But I just. I okay, all right. It's not the fact that you're sitting there going, David's recommending something else again. And then you go into a little another group going, fucking hell, come, somebody tell him to stop now, please. Another because it's getting podcast. weird. Yeah. Uh, James, you've got to listen to it. It is one of the funniest things I've ever heard. And I know it's been going for a year and I've never heard it, but um, my friend Carl told my brother, who told me that clip that I passed you had been passed around from several people. <laughs> and uh, honestly, I was listening to it before we started the show and I thought I was going to die. Like I was at the, at the sink. And what's annoying is one of those podcasts, right? That as someone, we put quite a bit of effort into this. All that podcast is, is them reading out letters and laughing. That's it. That's the whole show. There's there's no difference. They don't introduce features. They don't work on anything. They read out a, a letter and laugh at it, yet it still manages to be one of the best things I've listened to in fucking ages. So, um, yeah, yeah, I listened to that. the clip, and the clip was hilarious. I just uh, haven't haven't got around to it. I've Dave, just got nothing to do, Dave, nothing to I've, do with me. I've just subscribed. There you go. Okay. No, that's fine. Now it sounds like <laughs> I'm forcing you, Sean. <laughs> That first clip should have been enough. Listen to this, guys. I shouldn't have even had to send a clip, unless I do. Like, what? What is it? I mean, it? if it, it didn't, you... what? We, what? We, we, yeah, we, yeah. I mean, the, no, the yeah, clip yeah, was a clincher. Yeah, if it wasn't for the clip, I, I probably wouldn't have bothered. But again, it's nothing to do with you. It's Why? just, no, isn't it? But because I already don't have time to listen to all the podcasts that I want to listen to. So yeah, like but I the was other day, like, this is the funniest shit. But You've like the other day, on this. Uh, my mate Cammy was like, "You need to listen to Reply All," and apparently he's told me this before, and I've and I've ignored him. And yeah, he was talking about like one of the latest episodes is like possibly one of the best podcasts he's ever heard. Still, still not subscribed to it. That's yeah, just me. That's just recommend my... that to, let, recommended that to me, but my yeah, that's account. just me and my own great brain, brain problems. Right. Okay, okay. Let me ask you this: It's yeah. got to be a friend, though. Yeah. That if they say listen to this, you go and listen to that. There, there, mm. there's, there has to be that one person on your on your list that, <sighs> that goes, got Sean. You got to listen to this. Anyway, and you I'm not listening to. Yeah, that's the problem. That's the thing. I've got, I've got, I'm, I always feel like I'm sort of juggling a list of podcasts. 
And it's like, at the moment, I feel like I'm in quite a good place in the amount of stuff that I've got where I can probably listen to it all. Admittedly, I have to listen to it at one and a half speed so I can get through everything, like, every week. <laughs> oh, you don't do that, do you? That's an awful way to listen well, to listen, it. As someone listen... who loves radio, I know how much you love radio, I can't believe you do that. Well, no, I listen to a That's... lot of stuff on one and a quarter speed because it's just, oh, mate. there's not enough time, <laughs> is there, to, like, to listen it's to deficient. everything? Do I do, guess, like, factual, you do that with Netflix? factual stuff, I get. Yeah. But, like, stories and, like, comedy podcast or whatever you can't do that too because it just half of half of it is timing like yeah. you know what i mean like delivery, the suspense yeah. and timing and delivery and everything it's just not as funny is it it's no. not as funny it James, might be funnier that, you like it if everything yeah. was like twice the speed no it, it, no we all know that it's funny if you listen to it at half speed <laughs> <laughs> so you're doing it wrong never got you're time doing it wrong Okay, all right. Well, I'm convinced. I'm quite happy with that answer. I'm all yeah, right. Yeah, it's not you. It's just everyone. I'm like, yeah, we've yeah. had loads of rec- I've had loads of recommendations. I watch this, see this, listen to that. But I'm just like, okay. I mean, and then eventually I will, and I'm like, bloody hell! Why didn't I listen to this four years ago? When <laughs> like, reply you, the amount of people they recommended that is is. It must sometimes you get digits. like a, a message from someone. You're like, you send something, and I'm like, yeah, I'll check that out, and then you forget. You know, to like to yeah, actually yeah. do that. I do that all the time. I mean, I assume you do that to me as well, Dave, because sometimes I send you stuff and you don't bother replying. No, go on, like what? <laughs> I sent you a video this week. I thought it was pretty funny. Didn't get a reply. Which one? The one with the guy, you know, the the, the news anchor and the reporter who started having a go oh, at each other. Oh right, okay. <laughs> oh, do you yeah, know that... why I didn't reply to that? Right, I was again. It was one of those situations where I was supposed to reply and I didn't reply. Yeah. yeah. But do you know why I didn't reply to that? So this is it, it's been doing around on. Tw- uh, uh, Twitter recently and it, what it is it's a news reporter interviewing someone in a hallway and then he has an argument with the anchor and the, the line is well if I have to teach you how to do your job you know maybe we'll do that later right and it gets like really nasty and he goes well well, I was your boss once yeah you were and not anymore how'd that happen right that's how the clip <laughs> yeah. ends right and I'll tell you something I've referenced that clip on this show for about three years, really? like several times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I saw it years and years ago, right? And I'm, it's not one of those that's like, oh my God, that's so old. What I'm saying is that I can't believe that's the first time you've seen it, yeah? Because I constantly say, that's how we treat you when you do the news. <laughs> like it's, we go, read the quote, James. I can't read the quote. Well, if I have to teach you how to be a reporter, I'll do that later. <laughs> like, it's just exactly the same. So if you've seen that clip, that's us and the news. Right, should we get some feedback from last week's show? <laughs> Stuff's oh. making a lot more sense now. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Um, Lars Hedidam. Uh, Dave Ditchin Res, what the frack? Saving up money for a year, buying tickets and planning out a trip to ye old London and then finding out on the podcast that Dave will be spending his time in a piece of express in Woking. <laughs> Can we please? Can we at least get an infield news report from Dave, like James did from China, being passive aggressive to people in the background? Uh, and I've only had Charlie Hind. After this point of news of Dave's absence from Res, I may have come up with a good alternative. Let's get Dave to record his own version by infor- uh, of Informer by Snow, so that all his licky boom boom down practice doesn't go to waste. <laughs> Uh, I tell you what, I don't like the idea of doing a video of Licky Boom Boom Down because we are going. Obviously, I'm going to be at another live show, and it would just it'd be so much better live. Like I'm yeah, telling yeah, you, yeah. it yeah, would definitely. be so much better live. Just me just doing it on a video web. I will, however, do whatever you want on video that sounds like a good idea. Definitely. Well, so what, whatever you want on video, <laughs> whatever you want that sounds <laughs> what, like a good idea, in my opinion. Is what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, yeah. I mean, I I know what works, James. I know what works. The, the Licky Boom Boom Down needs to be live. I'll tell you I need what to works. be dressed as Coming Luigi, running through the audience. Singing li- <laughs> you know I can't do that. Why, why you know can't, can't you do that, do Dave? That. I can't tell you, can I? Not, I not on air, and you know why I can't do it. I know, so, and it's ridiculous. Don't push your luck, <laughs> all right? Don't push your luck. Look, you should be like, you should be on my side. What? You should be like, yeah, no, I did this, and you know, I get it, I get it. Why not? Earth like, would I oh, be on your you? side after the weeks and weeks and just continual abuse about all that stuff? Why would I be on your side? Because I held my hands up and said it was my fault. You never, not once, did you do that, James? I did. You blamed your wife, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I mean, any ideas? Any ideas? Uh, we'll get any back old to guy that. and. What's that? Right, okay, well, we'll think about it, we'll think about it. Uh, yeah, I apologise no, again. No, we'll Sorry think about, about it, Dave. Go on, all right. I'm the one that's got to record it, though, Matt, haven't it? You know what I mean? You can think about an idea. If I think it's shit, I just won't record it. What are you going to do about that? Give you another suggestion. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> he falls a distance, baby. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> okay. Tony Lewis. Hey, guys. Had a thought about GeForce Now when you were discussing it uh, last week. I would look at it from a potential loss of income for devs and publishers from a new audience discovering their games. If your game has been sat on Steam for a few years at a low price, the sudden influx of players discovering your game before you've had a chance to consider how you would price it for a new platform could mean missing out on a few bob. The closest example could be how indie titles are priced on Switch over the PC. Yeah, that's costs importing to new hardware. Uh, but you would want to price the game higher to capitalize on its massive audience. Hmm. I mean, so, I, I it, you could still just own a PC and <laughs> get it for that price. I, I right. I, so I've been thinking about this a lot recently, like throughout the week, like trying to think of the reason why they wouldn't do this. I think I might have got it. Yeah. So with X Cloud coming up and PS Now starting to be pushed a lot more, are they thinking? With the streaming thing like becoming, you know, more evident, and even though it's through like Game Pass and all that sort of stuff, subscription services rather than the way that GeForce Now does it, mm. is there some sort of loss of um, how do you put it? Like loss of this is the wrong word I know, but like sort of loss of equity of having like if you've got an indie game that can't be streamed anywhere. Is that worth more to sell to something like PS Now or Xbox Game Pass? Or oh, XCloud? I see. Yeah, because it's it already be technically if... appeared on another streaming service, but without, exactly. out of your control. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe they're saying if it's already on it, like the exclusivity is gone then, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe that's worth more to them holding on to that than it is actually just like the additional money they'll get from people using GeForce Now and Steam. Yeah. Yeah, it could be. But you've, that's a long shot. Like that really is like a very specific type of game that 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 um that that works for. But uh, yeah, I don't know, man. It's um it's an interesting one. But I I don't think that's right. I think if you're if you're comparing the markets in terms of Steam versus console games, um, yeah, it makes GeForce now makes it easier. But you've still got that if you own a PC and a console anyway. So mm. that that price difference is is still evident in many people's homes so i i'm not sure that i'm not convinced that that's the reason cool well we'll definitely have more discussion on geforce now in the news uh for sure um smw and not a spaceship i feel sick every time the show notes for the computer game show mentions an announcement <laughs> well uh just uh get ready get prepared for an announcement later on the show could be anything what? What? Wait, what? Nothing. I'm just, I'm just trying to shit a stew up. Okay. Oh, are you just gonna whack that in? The... <laughs> Maybe call this show <laughs> an announcement. Big announcement. <laughs> an the announcement. big announcement. Open bracket. Matt's leaving. Close bracket. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just, you just call it changes coming. There you go. Then... <laughs> Matt is going. Yeah. <laughs> Someone is leaving. Show's over. It's just called show's, show's over. over. Yeah, show's done. <laughs> Yeah, cool. Yeah, uh, six grill at six grill yeah. underscore games. Um, read a second wind mechanic. It sounds like David might be describing the brilliant Mad Max Max Payne three. <laughs> Mad what, Max what? Payne three. Yeah, the Mad Max Payne three. <laughs> um, you're talking about the the mechanic where you get shot down and you're crawling and you have to kill someone to yeah like, yeah. like you've only got a pistol left and you have to kill them to get yourself back up. So yeah, that was in, that, that was in Max, Max Payne three, was it? I think it did. Yeah, I think it did. I think it was. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it did. Yeah. Wait. Okay. What game were you referencing this from, David? No. So, um, Sean was referencing it from what game was it? Borderlands. Sean? Borderlands. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I said I remember it from somewhere, and I remember I definitely had um, Left for Dead in my head, but the mm. difference was that when you shot someone with a pistol and killed someone with a pistol when you were downed, um, you couldn't just get back up again. Uh, but yeah, you could do that in Max Payne 3, can you? What great game that was. Really forgotten that. It was a it? good game. I enjoyed that. Yeah. I mean, no do you reckon I'll do it. a fourth one? Like, what, what, how they, did the yeah. third one. The third one sort of came and didn't blow pills. No, the third one face. bang, didn't it? That sold really well. I don't know. It, just, it felt like Max Payne as a franchise just sort of. Yeah, I don't know if it's, it's gone a big, somewhere, but a big deal like, anymore, yeah. No, no. It, uh, it, Rockstar announced Max Payne 4 next week. It'll be, be everywhere. Because it'd be it, huge. It, it wasn't it like Rockstar. Bondi or 
There was a team that got made, it got closed down, wasn't it? I'm yeah, sure. didn't they get? Didn't they buy them or something? And then, but it was very much like they had rock stars, you know, hallmarks all over it, didn't it? Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, fantastic, fantastic game. But it definitely felt like a game that needed improving on. You know, it wasn't perfect, especially the opening. You know, three or four hours of that game were a bit rough. Okay, um, I, I think it's got some rock star hallmarks, but I've got an idea for the fourth one. Wait, uh-uh. hear me out. Go on, Max Payne Online. What? It, like thousands of people <laughs> on the server, but everyone's in bullet time. Well, forever. No, so it's just got, a game uh, no, in slow remember, motion. <laughs> yes, because <laughs> if you because <laughs> if you remember that, um, they did have an online mode for Max Payne Three, mm. and it did have bullet time, and it was just done really weirdly where. You activated it, but only people within a certain radius. Mm. Like it activated bullet time for people in a certain radius as well, or whatever. Wow. It didn't really work. I mean, the the only good thing about that Max Payne Three uh, multiplayer was there was a button on it that just where you just shouted swear words. <laughs> it's just <laughs> complete. I think it was Y or something. You just like press the button and you just went fuck. <laughs> it was I thought really you were that they shouted out why why uh, <laughs> why man, get down on the knees no nah, no they didn't why? do that but why? maybe they should have they should maybe have maybe they should have we're going to end this Alex Warboys alright gents seeing as James binned the mediocre Blair Witch and asked for suggestions uh, we'll have, we'll cover that in a minute. Uh, I put for Alien Isolation. It's such a great game, which will make a change for James, and it's got plenty of potential for scares. Love the pod, keep up the good work. So, James, you started your Blair Witch streaming series on Friday, and you I ended, ended it. your yeah. Blair Witch streaming series on Friday. <laughs> uh, what happened? It's rubbish, wasn't it? It's um. No, I, it was, it, I watched bits and it, it was just you were just complaining about the game. But what did, were there actually any jump <laughs> yeah, but scares? That's every one of his streams, man. <laughs> There's point. no difference there. Were there actually any jump scares, or was it just no? Well, there was slow supposed to be. Under. There was supposed to be jump scares, but they weren't scary, and it was just. <laughs> I mean, that boring. is boring. <laughs> it was just really boring, like really boring. So they were just jumps. <laughs> um, I, I, listen, are you just the horror guy now? I don't is that what you're be. doing? No, I don't want to be. That's the thing. I don't want to play. Just a horror game. I mean, it's, it is entirely up to you, James. You're the one who's <laughs> picked <laughs> yeah. another horror game. I have discovered this talent, and uh, I don't really want to take advantage of it, but I don't want to hold the world back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, seen, he's seen all his highlights in that video. He's like, well, hang on. All, all, lots of best bits were involving other doors or, <laughs> or, 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 or jumping and scary things. So I'll, I'll keep doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Give the fans what they want. Absolutely shitting my pants on camera. <laughs> um, but the only so you've just go on. The only one that that's worked with though was Until Dawn. Like really, the other games that I played that have been scary and in inverted commas haven't been like really. Play no. um um. I, I, sorry, I, do you have a game in mind for your next one? Are you still no, working I've, it out? I've got nothing. I've, honestly, I I need a break. I think because I've just been. I I just keep going from one thing to another, and I want to I want to choose something good. You know, to like to play and. Blair Witch was a terrible idea. It, uh, it didn't work at all. <laughs> we could touch that last week. I would really like to see you do another PSVR game. Mm. Like, it's those streams. I know you hated it, but those streams were so fun. But that's the like, problem, really though, because it it's okay, but honestly, this will sound ridiculous, but it's fucking exhausting playing that like, playing oh, absolutely. PSVR the, stream. That one No Man's Sky one I did was, I mean, it was good oh, yeah, fun God. for a bit, but I felt fucking rotten afterwards. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's. I mean, that's. I mean, okay. I usually do short streams anyway, but that's why I limited it to an hour every time because I was like, yeah, I yeah. just don't. I can't do this. It's just not a lot of fun. But I mean, there's. I mean, there's a whole load of VR stuff. I. I did think about going back to it because there's like a. There's a lot of. I've got a load of VR games that I could probably try that may be entertaining. I don't know. I have to see. I guess. Alien Isolation, though, you're not interested? I See, I want to play that, but then, again, it's one of those games that I'm not sure would be very interesting to watch on stream. Because, for me, when I'm streaming something, I need to have something that I can, like, talk about and that I can react to. Whereas something like that, it feels like it's all about the atmosphere and being sort of isolated, you know, being isolated from, um, you know, yeah. from everything that's around I'm you. Alien. Yeah, if, yeah you're, I... if you're in the chat, you know, you've got chat going on and all that kind of thing, you're not really, are you? Do you know what I mean? It's... <laughs> Stick yeah, it pulls you out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up your bum. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 listen to him though. He's talking like a proper streamer now. Yeah, it's good. He's a proper streamer. James Farley, proper streamer. Proper Love streamer it. having a break. Um, <laughs> oh, well, well, I mean, did you want suggestions, to, uh, James, or just? I mean, I was thinking about doing a Mario Maker one because I thought that you know yeah, that might be it. all right, but yeah. 
Maybe I'll do that. It's been dreams, done, though, James. Just buy dreams and stream dreams. Mate, I, honestly, dreams sounds like a great uh, thing to stream, but um, yeah, I ain't going to pay full price for it. What is it like? Um, it's only like, like thirty quid, isn't it? Full price. Yeah, but they've been saying they should they should release a cheaper version where you get to play the games like with no making stuff on it. It makes so much sense. Oh, well, and then it'll be like a ten pound upgrade if you want to start creating. Yeah, maybe. I, did, I didn't think that far ahead, to be honest with you, Matt. I just <laughs> got to the point where I was just like, don't want to make anything, just want to play stuff. Like That would be pretty cool. Yeah, that's uh, interesting, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, that's it for feedback. Is at Computer Game Pod on Twitter if you want to tweet us, or you can email podcast at thecomputergameshow.com. Fucking hell, not a lot of feedback. Listen, we have got our uh, <laughs> other halves to email in weird things that we do. Uh. We will go through them later in the show, probably just before the emails. So uh, look forward to that. That's actually happening in this week's show. But first, let's go to the news. Okay, uh, I am 8-Bit Resigns as E3 2020 Creative Director. Ooh. Right. <laughs> okay. Okay. Looking so, good, right. isn't it, guys? It's <laughs> I mean, uh, so Let, I am eight, story. I am eight bit. How like public? Because I mean, I've heard that before. Where's I am eight bit come so from? So I know them as producers of video game merchandise, primarily soundtracks. Um, I know famously they got the license to do the you know when Res Infinite came out, so they produced the vinyl soundtrack for that. Um, but, so what so, do they do for E three then? Like, well, what's their, I don't know. Right, they say creative well, director, but what does that mean? <clears throat> Can I shall I tell you what they said here? So Absolutely. it says here, apparently they were behind this new show floor that was going to have what they were calling insider access and experiential zones. And I think this this was one of the things because basically they were just doing what Jeff Keighley was doing, you know, like with right, the right. with the Coliseum and everything. Like they they were going to have like influencers there and all that kind of stuff like going on. That okay. was the plan. And so right. I mean, actually, do, you, no, do you want do you want the quote as what they've said here? Yes. Okay. So. He says, it's with mixed emotions that I'm 8-Bit has decided to resign as creative directors of what was to be an evolutionary E3 2020 floor experience. We've produced hundreds of gaming and community events, and it was a dream to be involved with E3. We wish the organisers the best of luck. Yeah, I mean, they, <laughs> the, uh, I mean that's yeah. a weird... <laughs> I mean, there's two ways of reading that, isn't there? Like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, there definitely is. Um... I mean, with all this stuff that's coming out with E3, loads of people pulling out, and um, uh, you know, just it's not just pulling out though, is it? It's little comments that are left afterwards by certain people within the industry that you just kind of think, "What is going on?" It's like, yeah. what is going Do they know that they're not allowed to say? It, sounds it feels like... like more than that, though, James. If it was a sinking ship, I think A would see a lot more people cancelling and it folding a lot quicker, mm. and B, you know. It it would feel less uh, spiteful is not the word, but it would feel less controversial based on some of the comments that have come out about it. Feel... Like Jeff Keighley saying what I've just found out about E three means that I can no longer you know, that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. So do you feel like there's like a power struggle or something going on here? No, I think they're trying to plan something that a lot of people don't agree with. I think that's what it is. I mean, this is all just based on nothing, really, but that's what it feels like. It feels like they want to do something and a lot of people either don't think it's a good idea or morally think it's a wrong idea. And that that's that's the feeling you get from these statements. They're not just run-of-the-mill, look, we're not going to be there this year. They seem a little bit more candid, the comments. Just not, like, completely candid, not like people ranting or whatever, but not as... Like straight, we have enjoyed out. Not as robotic as you're used to when people yeah. just leave a show like that. Maybe that's just me looking into it too much, and it could be pretty straightforward. But it does feel like some things happened, like an announcement that happened within the people that work on that show, and a lot of people are not happy about it. I um, I reckon it's just that a lot of these people realise that this is finished and that they just. But you'd yeah, still they... take the paycheck and exactly. do the work. Like, you, like, these guys yeah. only signed on in January. They've been there two months, and they're creative directing it, directing it. So they'll be the ones, you know. Well, I mean, it's for them to quit, for the ones yeah, that exactly. really had a lot of power to define how it's going to fun- function and run like it. I think it, but then, it's concerning. Yeah, but then this makes it look like they were really not confident at all that that the ESA are going to pull this off. Yeah, they're just like, this looks like it's going to be rubbish. Yeah, we don't and they want don't to be want to be associated with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Um, I think the other thing is that with obviously with so many conferences being shut down currently due to stuff that isn't gaming related, I was saying to Matt like the other day, if that gets cancelled, if E3 gets cancelled, is that is that it? You mean if it gets because cancelled I, because of um because of the, the yeah, virus, 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 yeah. Coronavirus. I mean, I think I think that is almost certainly going to happen, and like this is a. This is a huge year for it to happen. And as I said in the group, like what will happen is, okay, this thing gets cancelled and then people, well, everyone basically will be forced to say, okay, well, we, we I, guess, I guess we still want to show stuff so we'll do some online events. And everyone will just do online events yeah, and probably work out how we save loads of money. Do we, do we really need E3? Award tried to do the online event thing and it never <laughs> happened, did it? it? We never got our award, Matt. We well, never yeah, got our award, but, you know. But, but actual companies that know what they're doing. But like, you know, this will force <laughs> everyone to like do that, and then they'll be like, "Well, hell, we definitely need to go next year." So, like, you know, this is like a make or break year for E three. If it doesn't happen because of the coronavirus, it's, I think that might be the I final now. Be huge. You know? If yeah, it's crazy, if it happens, I mean, like, given you know, with yeah, with Jeff Keighley leaving, with with IMA bit pulling out, it's a it's a huge year. I mean, like, so they've said, you know, it, it, what they signed the company up to be invigorated the show and frankly to shake things up. I mean, that, that that's a great thing that clients say. And then when you go back to them saying, here's a, here's a way we go shake it up, they're like, oh no, it's, no we're not going to shake it up that much. Like, mm. I deal with that every day at work with, with clients who say, yeah, we want to be this, we want to be that, and actually they, they don't, they don't, they just want to be the same with a slightly different <laughs> color. Um, so and also there was another line here about it being like an evolutionary experience, like. <laughs> So, so not revolutionary, just slightly changed. But other other comments say something you know things that want just, to really invigorate the show and shake things up. So, what are they planning? It it can't just more, literally Matt, be Matt, Matt, Matt. it's more influencers. That's what it is. It's like <laughs> well, evolutionary. Okay. I mean, more influencers. I mean, it's uh yeah. The C three is gonna be huge. Whether it happens or doesn't, it's gonna be it's a big year. And yeah, I mean, I, I it's think, like a right. console console release <laughs> announcement year. It's like oh, everything's happening at once. Like this is a weird E three for it to be so shaky. This should be arguably one of the stronger ones with new, with new consoles around the corner. Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking. Like I don't, I can't decide whether this is a good thing that I'm missing E three this year or a bad thing, <laughs> and mainly because, you know, I kind of want to see if it goes ahead. I want to see like how weird it is yeah, and yeah. to not know that like you've got such a great opportunity to fuck with me this year <laughs> like seriously because in previous years we kind of knew what it was about and the, the the lies were games that were announced that weren't you know and stuff like that whereas this year it could just be it didn't really happen you know yeah, and yeah. you could just yeah you could drop anything and i'd believe it so i'm a little bit concerned about that but uh, at the same time, I know that I'm going to be sitting there not missing like massive, massive announcements because what's the fucking point? <laughs> you know what so I mean? <laughs> with these guys pulling out, and now there's like three months or so, uh, March, April, yeah, like I say, yeah, so uh, three and a bit months to go. Like, what's this going to mean? Is it actually not going to be that much of an evolution experience? Is it really going to be much more the same as it was before because they haven't got the time to arrange what they want you to? Like, what does this really know. mean for E3? I mean, none of us know. That's what's so weird about it. You know, you could predict an E3 to some extent, but, you know, you know you'd get new games. You know you'd have ridiculous celebrity cameos. You know, you could put that stuff together, but, but this year you can't. Like, it's it's crazy. That's my point, man. But it's then so it's fucking... <laughs> it might almost be ideal if they had to cancel it because of coronavirus, because then they can just be like, well, actually, if it had gone ahead, we think it would have been really good, but you'll never know. See you next year. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's like, that, isn't it? It's yeah. like Brexit, isn't it? It's the same thing. It's like, it's all just... <laughs> I was going to say, say, that's like the Xbox One launch. Like, <laughs> when, they, when they changed everything and went, well, you know, it, we did have this amazing vision for the future, but you didn't want it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, should we get on to the next news story? Yeah, so 2K Games has joined Bethesda and Activision in pulling games from GeForce now. So they've taken all their games off there. So that's like stuff like Borderlands, Bioshock, all that kind of stuff. So NVIDIA, I mean, this is this is what NVIDIA have said. They said, per publisher request, please be advised 2K Games titles will be removed from GeForce now today. And they said they're working with them to re-enable them in the future. Uh, the thing is, though, I mean, Eurogamer has got some quite good comments from some people that are not very happy. Do you want to hear some? Yeah, yeah absolutely. You, you, you just, yeah. 
So this guy says, this is really garbage, complained one user. I bought... So you said garbage, not rubbish. It sounds like James Farley. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I bought extra Borderlands 3 because I can play it with the highest resolution and graphics set on uh, GFN. And another game that I can no longer use. This is uh, There are fewer and fewer. Meanwhile, it would be better to buy a better PC than to rent a high-end PC. Could have done beforehand, yep. This other guy said, sorry guys, this is getting laughable. By the time my three months ends, uh, there will be nothing to play. So what reason would I have to start paying? And uh, yeah, so... Yeah, I mean that's that's another another company that's moved. But Tim Sweeney does like uh, GeForce now. He's uh, <laughs> this, this oh, what I do. love. It's like James was the first to point this out. But whenever there's like news like this, that's all keep, always kicking off. It always seems that Epic get involved and go. Actually, we like it. <laughs> we, we, you know, like actually, yeah, well, you could do whatever you want. Like, yeah, it's just I don't know, getting a bit tedious now. Epic getting a bit tedious. So, I mean, this is what he said. So Tim Sweeney said, Epic is wholeheartedly supporting NVIDIA's GeForce Now service <laughs> with Fortnite and with e- Epic Game Store titles that choose to participate and will be improving... The free-to-play the- Fortnite? The free-to-play yeah. Fortnite? That you're, go- you're going in with that, are you? Okay, fair enough. And uh, this is, will be improving the integration over time. Then, then he said, it's the most developer-friendly and publisher-friendly of the major streaming services with zero tax on game revenue. Game companies who want to move the game industry f- towards a healthier state for everyone should be supporting this kind of service. And then he just went off on a big thing about how he hated Google and Apple, basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, all right, mate. Like, what have you got? Does your mate work now or something? Hey, I mean, come on. Oh, oh we support. Look, I like GeForce now. I think it's great, <laughs> and I don't quite like. I, c- I understand the big companies pulling their games from it. I get that. Um, the smaller indie developers, I'm not so sure why, but, but you know they might have a good excuse. Um, I think this all comes back down to they completely underestimated the difference, or not not so much the difference. They completely underestimated uh, how much people see this alongside other streaming services. Like it's not like those other streaming services, but people just lump it in with them. And I think the reaction to that is all based on the fact that people are comparing it to Stadia and. Um, any other streaming services that are coming down the pipeline. Uh, yeah, I think that's where that's where the uh, I think that's where GeForce now completely underestimated the, the the market really because you know once you start lumping it in with them, of course they should have had those business deals lined up uh, from the get go, and they obviously didn't. So yeah, yeah, bit of an awkward one. Yes, yeah, so it's this. It seems very consumer friendly, but. Uh, I guess less well. It's less about being developer friendly, and more just the fact they can't charge again for their game on another service. So take that off. But that's what you. I'm saying. It's not a service, really, is it? That's. The, I mean, it is in the sense of like replacement for hardware, but not in a sense of accessing games. That's what's so confusing about it. That's why people are like. I I get why say someone like a uh, Rockstar or Take Two want to take their games off there because they're blatantly going to do their own thing or at least sell theirs exclusively to other places. But um, I, can, I think, you know. yeah, I think probably what it is is a lot of these companies, they do want these, like, you know, the, whoever's running the streaming service to pay them a lot of money to have it on their streaming service. And obviously they're not, like, NVIDIA hasn't done that, have they, as far as we know? No. So, no, yeah. no. No, crazy and like, you know, people are like obviously charging again for like copies of the game on Stadia. They want to be able to do that, not just say, "Hey, on, you, you're only going to buy it once, and that's it." That's it's not good enough for them. It's great for us, but clearly, devs want more. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, the ultra rare Nintendo PlayStation prototype has been sold at auction for two hundred thirty thousand pounds. Okay, James. I know you know the history to this. So, um, can you take us through it? Okay. What this what this what is it? What are they call it Nintendo PlayStation. Yeah, the Nintendo PlayStation. So this yeah, was the that. machine that Nintendo and uh, Sony were working on together. Uh, you know, that was supposed to be like a CD like add on for the Super NES. Uh, before it then got all like trashed because uh, Nintendo went in with Philips instead. I mean, and... completely fucked Sony over, right? Yeah. Because then... was it? Is the story? Is the story? Let me see if I get this right. Is the story that Sony executives turned up for an announcement at maybe E three? Was it E three back then? Yeah, I think it was. And was it and they oh, were it, expecting. Well, no, it would have been the Consumer Electronics Show, maybe. Right. Yeah, okay. Right. Yeah. And and they were expecting Nintendo to announce this partnership with Sony, and they sit there to watch the the 
speech and Nintendo announced that they'd teamed up with another company. Yeah. Isn't that how it went down? That, that <laughs> I was... mean, that is the most fucked up thing. <laughs> that that was from console wars i'm not That's you know right. it's like not sure whether it's like completely accurate but i mean the right. the the objection was was that sony were going to be taking like a cut of all the cd's that were produced you know like for the games and nintendo weren't happy with that that they didn't want because then they felt they'd be cut out they'd become like the pointless middle like middle person so that's why they went with Philips instead but then also i mean sony was supposed to be going to be working with um with sega as well like for doing like cd add-on for mega drive but then that didn't happen either. It's Fun like well, yeah. that could have been been quite different. But anyway, it's believed that there was around two hundred prototypes of this were made, and but then most of them were like eventually kind of destroyed. And this one showed up because there was a, this guy who was working for this company that was called Advanta that went bankrupt, and he was working for them. And then he went to this auction, and he bid seventy five dollars for a box of rubbish. And inside the box of rubbish was one of these units um, that you oh, know that had been that had been there, and it it's because apparently the it's the former uh, it's Sony Computer Entertainment of America president, it's Olaf Olafson was working for that company, so he was probably involved with this. It was probably something to do with him, you know, like when he was when he was at Sony, and so then he he got hold of this, and yeah, then they they went for the auction. But then I heard that originally he was offered a million dollars yeah. prior to the auction. For this, but prototype. he said no, and he said no because I think I can get more for it at auction. Um, but he got. Do you think that's bollocks? 000. Do you I think that's know. real? What do you think, Matt? Do you think it's real? Um, I mean, I think, I, I think there's been quotes out there, but I, I don't know. I mean, that, that's saying the story that everyone's going with. Yeah, he should have gone with it. So initially, after this happens, it was not known who it was that had actually bought, you know, that had put down the money and bought it because it was rumored that it was Palmer Lucky. Um, but then well, it turns he, he, out he was he was certainly leading the the he thing was, at yeah. one point. Yeah, but he was out. Found out it was Matt Murray in the end. Yeah. Matt Murray, <laughs> just Murray, Murray a surprise, boy. Dave. Just for a surprise. <laughs> or, or, or is it? Or is it the fact that you weren't there day one, so you weren't interested? Exactly. I'm trying, I'm trying to work out if this is a Matt Murray thing or not. Go on. Uh, but in the end, he was outbid by the founder of Pets.com. Uh, Greg uh, McLemore, who he got it, and because he's now like a video game collector, because he he was one of those people that started off like a load of like different companies during the dot com like bubble like period, like it was Pets dot com and Toys dot com and stuff like that, and obviously sold it off, made a lot of money, and now Cars. he collects com video games, Food dot com, yeah, uh, Bikes. yeah, yeah, all of those, yeah, 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 yeah. Pringles dot com, um, yeah, Chris dot com actually, um, <laughs> James, you were saying how like um, Sony and like Sega were maybe gonna get together with like a CD add on like what wh- when where does where's that on the timeline to like the mega cd before after no this was this was after i'm pretty certain this was this was after this was going to be for like a next generation kind of event was the plan my god the sega saturn oh no yeah, wait a minute no no no, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. no 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 it's no i'm getting confused oh, it wasn't yeah, with sony it was with silicon Va- it was with silicon graphics because they were going it was the whole thing of who no, was going to take that and in the end it was nintendo who went with the got him, boys. we got the truth out of him in the yeah, end didn't got we? Him. i was like hey, um, no, i got one, one, one more question <laughs> okay it, it, can he play any games on it that's the question i want to know well it does boot but i don't know what it plays i mean presume because the whole point was oh, that it, it was going to play oh it boots boy yeah it boots don't you it worry about that boot that motherfucker boots. Uh, D- D- Davey can't play because he can't afford PSN uh, on top. <laughs> <laughs> They're not cheap, are they, these days? They're not cheap. Don't worry about it, though, Matt. It does boot. It Go boots. <laughs> okay, next story. Um, no, is no, the... let's start on this one. Were we, were, we, were we done with this one? Yeah. Were we done with this one? Yeah. I mean, we heard the lady's comments there, and, you know, <laughs> he was a good uh, representative for the company, right? Oh, if you if you need me to teach you to be a reporter, just I'll do it later, James. I'll do it later. Next story. Reggie has gone and has become appointed to the GameStop board of directors. <laughs> what a great, <laughs> what a great okay. news story! This is strange, right? Is this strange? This is strange because I was fully under the impression that GameStop <laughs> were really up shit squeak over there. Like, I mean, it, what they, is... they are, but they still need board members. Yeah. yeah, I know, but why Reg surely Reg is above that, right? Are we well, done? He, Are we he just, just he's well, retired or whatever, or left he's like, you know, I'll just Yeah, yeah. It's like it's not like a full time job, is it? It'll just yeah. yeah. He's on some lecture on a board now doing this. You, know? yeah. you don't have to do anything, you just take the checks, don't you? Yeah. And you're just there. <laughs> what, so it's... he's literally just putting his name to it? Yeah. 
Well, that isn't it. that bad as well because you're putting your name to what is inevitably well, no, no, going to be a no, foul no, no. business. He's not just putting his name to it. He's on the board of directors. They, like the, the quote or from the piece, I'm sure says you know that there's tons of experience that can help. It's not like a non-exec he's, I mean, director. I he's think. also been appointed alongside like a former Walmart CEO as well. And also this pet smart president as well. What I like about the story is the way that these other two people, they've all got like that thing where they've got their name and then in the middle it's got like a <laughs> yeah, do you know what I mean? Where they got a name. You know, it's got yeah. they've got their name and then they've got the thing where they've got like another name Middle but names. in inverted commas. So for example, the Walmart US. <laughs> like, like, what from do this you mean? One. Like James Farley inverted commas Doctor Boomstick. Is that what you're talking about? No, it'd be about? like is it'd that... be like James then inverted commas Doctor Boomstick Farley. Do you know what I mean? That's what Dave just said. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, he didn't. He said, he said, he said, Dr. Boomstick, James, whatever. It, that's not what he said exactly. <laughs> James. Oh, it boots. What, what, so, what, <laughs> so, what, you think he's, what is he, like, what could he possibly get out of this? Money. I don't know. Money, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah but no, he's, he's got money. And sure, surely he feels like he's got enough experience. He wants to, like, Turn this company Turn it around. around. He's taking okay. the checks. Right. Well, no, if you're yeah. on the board of directors, it's it's like yeah, you're there in an advisory capacity, but it's not necessarily your problem if things. Fuck exactly. Up. Yeah, it's he's like... not working in GameStop shops every every Saturday afternoon. <laughs> yes, he's he's like, he he'll be standing there with his big grin on his face, sliding Nintendo games towards you. Like I don't yeah. want a Nintendo game. I want the new Call of Duty. I think, uh, I think you walk in the door and he just starts throwing games at you, just pelting like just, ah, fuck, with his these. massive hands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't. Know. Oh, a weird one. Weird one. Weird uh, one, but uh, yeah, it, it'd be interesting to see what. I mean, GameStop so it sounds like they they really are, you know, in shit. They, so well, they sound like game over here, around. don't they? Where yeah. everyone's going, they ain't got long, and then they somehow survive. Well, yeah, I mean, I've like, said that for years. But the game have been hoping. I mean, game are like basically hoping that the next generation of consoles, isn't it, to keep them going? We for like said that week. last generation. Yeah, they do mode. every yeah. Ne- every like, every next gen. They're like, okay, thank God for this, but. Yeah, and then, like and then going, mid-gen, going... they, you know, things start looking a bit bad and they lose a few branches and then, yeah, another gen comes out and kind of keeps yeah. them afloat for a bit. Just, yeah, but that's yeah. what I'm saying, right? Just before um, the PS4 came out, everyone was like, they're just hoping that this this uh, generation bangs, like the, the launch window of these mm. consoles bangs. And it did bang, but the reports were, no one's buying it from game, right? <laughs> and then they were like, well, they're dead now. And then all of a sudden, what, six years later, they're still bubbling about. It, it's so weird. It's bizarre. Mm. Yeah, it's uh, all like Robert Ashley money. No, he's not Robert Ashley. What's his name? <laughs> Mike Ashley. <laughs> Robert Ashley, the X one up uh, yeah. podcaster. What, what was that podcast he had? <laughs> uh, a Life Well Wasted. Yeah, that was oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. That actually come back, really. Mike no, Ashley. I mean, Mike Ashley. Ashley. Yeah, yeah. Mike Ashley money, I thought. Mike Ashley. Right, okay. All right. Well, that's, that's, uh, that's the end of that news story. Are we done? No, there's tons more news stories, isn't there? There's t- oh, cool, cool, wicked. No, that's good, that's good. I'm enjoying it this week. It does boot. <laughs> sorry, I don't know how to help with that. <laughs> okay, sorry, <laughs> Google, it's fine. Don't worry about that. That's not me, <laughs> for <once>. Okay. <laughs> that was really loud and made me jump. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's get rid of that. Okay, fine. Go on. Uh, Stadia are opening a new studio uh, in Playa Vista. Woo! Yeah. Oh, actually, this reminds me, Sean, you yeah. know you sent that link today. Oh, yeah, yeah. That. That Twitter thing, I'm 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 looking forward to reading that. I didn't reply okay. that time because I've been saving that. Oh, to, it's incredible. To, like, to save uh, the later. Basically, it's just a series of clips. So the the um, version of Final Fantasy 15 that is on Stadia has got Stadia exclusive content, um, which presumably they've taken a check to produce, and it's the most phoned in bullshit you've ever seen it's like a little driving mini game and everyone's like oh my god this looks like it was just made with like stock unity assets and like the physics don't even work and it's like fuck man they, they, square enix are taking the piss out of stadium <laughs> like yeah it, it looks like revolt and i like yeah. revolt yeah. back in the day <laughs> but it looks like that yeah it's bad i mean yeah, I, did they just look at how many people were buying their game on that <laughs> that service and thought that's literally no point no one's playing it <laughs> Yeah, we could just uh, deliver the code to do- for, to the door. <laughs> like, what's the point of putting it on Stadia? I'll say this, though. This goes against our narrative, doesn't it? Which one? Well, that the Google were just going to jack it all in and forget it. No, if they're opening yeah, studios. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's something. It's activity. It's, it's signs yeah, of life. Yeah. 
<laughs> but again, it's like it's the same thing with like Google Plus and things like that. There was yeah. always a lot of activity there with that, but it never really you know, paid off. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, no, it's again, it's just another interesting turn in this story that is Stadia. You should oh, yeah. have got that tattoo, Matt. You should have got that tattoo. <laughs> oh, yeah, I should have done. So, oh, um, so obviously, good. GDC got cancelled because of coronavirus. So, basically, it was, and um, Stadia got announced properly at GDC. So, it's been a year now. Oh, God, yeah. It's been a whole, it's a whole year old. I mean, like, as in like the idea of the service, because obviously, they yeah, yeah, I'd love to know how many people are paying for it at the moment. 40. I'd love for those figures um, to come out. Okay, so E3 is coming up. Do, like, we haven't had a Stadia Connect or whatever they're called for a long time. Do you feel like they're gonna have a big showing E3? No, uh, I think they go said, quiet all year. But yeah, but they said that. I mean, they said lots of things. But the things they did say were things such as in the spring, that's when a free version will come out, 4K streaming, uh, you know, pads will work on every device, that sort of stuff. Yes, and we're you very much in spring it up, now. Matt. You fucking <laughs> lapped it up. Your tongue came out, and you lapped it. And uh, and we told you, didn't we? We tried to tell you, and here we are. Here we are. I'm just saying what? it's the future, Dave. Is that too much to ask? <laughs> um, no, but I mean, like, I, think I mean, it might be at this point. <laughs> e- E3 is the summer, so they're going to miss that. They need to communicate some stuff. I- Surely they've got to show something at E3. They're, they're a games company now. They've got elements. Think, of- Matt, you're assuming that Google care or understand about things like E3 because I don't think they do, like at all. Mm. I-, I genuinely think the biggest problem that Stadia's had right from the beginning is that they haven't thought about the fact that it's about games. Like and about the gaming community and trying to get into the gaming community, they've not tried at all. Everything they've done has all just been like we're doing Google, we're doing our own thing and everything, and they've not bothered at all to try and like you know get in with people really at all. Yeah, they're they're in love with disruptive tech, aren't they? And yeah. they've not actually considered what people really want from it. Um, well, it's a anyway, business model. I'm looking forward the to the big business E3 model showcase. needs to change. The, 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 uh, it just completely needs to change. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they do pivot to that new one. Which yep. which new one? To mm. a Netflix or Game Star one, where everyone thought it was anyway. Pivot to that if they can, and then, well, then move well, on. Well, they're going to have to basically create their own version of Game Pass, aren't they? That's what they need yeah. to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what they need to do. Yep. But it's whether they do it or not, and the fact that it's running on Linux doesn't help that at all. Well, they've already got 26 see- games on the service, so that's a good start. Yep, yep, yep. See this this new studio that they're putting together. It, they've taken like the it's the former head of uh, Sony Santa Monica. Mm-hmm. Um, like Shannon Studstill has come to go and work for them, and I mean that's I mean this is all very good and everything, but these are going to take some time, aren't they, to like actually create anything? Yeah, of course, yeah. So you surely they say, should have done this. Games aren't built in a day. Are they they should have done this a couple yeah. of years ago, presumably, like before the launch, rather than now. It just oh, feels yeah, like but, yeah, but they can't turn back time, James. So yes, they should have done it in the past. They did. Well, yeah, they just shouldn't now. have launched it then, should they? If it wasn't ready, this is what I kept saying about like with Microsoft when they first came into like with the Xbox, they had all of this worked out before they launched. Like they they'd already like you know bought a load of studios, they bought Bungie, they did all that sort of stuff to get it all ready. Again, what you said, Sean, it's absolutely true. It's just they just thought we've got some disruptive technology, we need to get it out there, mm. and without any thought about like you know how how it would actually you know play with like with the community, yeah. Oh, you're giving him a right good telling off there, isn't you, <laughs> Naughty, naughty Google. <laughs> it's, no, it's, just, it's just the arrogance, students. isn't it? It's just the <sighs> arrogance of just thinking, you know, just because we're massive, we can we can just do this without even having to bother to like create any content or anything. Well, I think it was the Beast Cast that said like this week, and it, I mean they got it absolutely bang on. Google entering gaming should be massive. Yeah. It should be a massive deal. Yeah. And it fucking ain't. And that's the worst thing about Stadia. I mean, Matt, do you remember when we watched that? That we we watched that GDC thing, didn't we? We did a talk yeah. over thing for it. Yeah. And we were both expecting there was going to be like massive announcements. You know, there was going to be like we've got this on Stadia, this exclusive, all that kind of stuff. And just shocked. There's just nothing at all. Yeah, it was like, I remember you chatting to you guys after that, yeah. and you just going, "You will not believe how bad that was." <laughs> like there must be something we don't know at this point because. Why would anyone want this? Um, um, God, a year we ago, we're, we're, there's so much potential, so much <laughs> excitement. And now look. Man, that was you were weird during those months. I ain't going to lie to you, man. That was weird. <laughs> Why was, was it weird getting excited about, about something? You, because it's, it's something that's obviously shit. shit. There was yeah. nothing to be excited about. <laughs> there was nothing to be excited about. That's it's why. Ken. David's called the future. Look it up. 
<laughs> School disruptive right, okay. technology. Look it up. <laughs> okay. All right, next story. Okay, so Valve have said that they see Half Life Alex as being like a return to the Half Life universe and yeah, not like boy, the end of it. Let's go. Does that oh, mean, yeah. don't worry, it ain't just going to be VR shit. We're going to do some real stuff. We're going to do a proper one. Uh, yeah. well, do you want, <laughs> yeah. do you want to hear what Valve's Robin Walker has said to Game Informer? Absolutely. Go on. Yes, please. Okay, so it says, Half-Life means is a it, lot Is to this going to be your new thing, where you, you ask us before you just tell us stuff? Yeah, I mean, just is tell us, it? mate. What if he said no? I was going to say, is the answer ever going to be no, do you think? <laughs> no, James, often, I'm not interested, it, mate. Sean, just Sean, leave it. Leave it. I don't... Sean, it is often No. <laughs> And it is to often, fair, why right. did you choose this story? And it is, so it's like, you know, I've, that's right. why sometimes I ask. Right. Yeah, no, that's just, fine. Yeah, that's just, fine. just read out until we interrupt or say, <laughs> stop reading this. It's a God, James, bit God. <laughs> no, I mean, you're absolutely right, but but it has been funny because you've done that about eight times today. God. <laughs> Half-Life means a lot to us, and it's been incredibly rewarding to re-familiarise ourselves with its characters, setting, and mechanics. Uh, there are Half-Life Alex team members who have been at Valve since Half-Life 2, and oh, quite God. a few who go back to the original Half-Life. There are also people on the team for whom Half-Life Alex is their first time working on this series at all, and many of them <laughs> certainly hope it is not the last. We absolutely see Half-Life Alex as our return to this world, not the end of it. I absolutely we love will say, that paragraph. We will say is so it good. is Brian's last time, though, because he has been awful. He's been <laughs> shocking. Yeah, that bit about, oh, they hope it's not the last time. So, yeah, we asked around, and no one wants to lose their jobs. So <laughs> yeah. we're gonna do another do you half life. Say, yes. Do you want another half life? Do you want another half life? Do you want another half life? Um, um, I love that this this whole paragraph is brilliant because like there were half life half life Alex team members who've been in Valve since Half Life Two. Imagine how jaded they are. <laughs> and then there's like some who yeah, are new, like some like new. I mean, you know, they've w- done w- fuck pine- all, wet- all this time. <laughs> Yeah, but no, but they've been like this, you know, smoking, drinking. Like we were told, Half Life Three was coming ten years ago, and then like this on like newbies. Oh, I'm excited for Half Life Alex Two. We're going to work on it straight away. I imagine. Like, no, it's not just. Uh... Someone I mean, mentions um... just doing it episodically, and everyone's like, "Oh, yeah. for fuck's sake!" Oh, like... like... I watch. I watch those Sorry. gameplay videos that they released last week, and yeah, I'll watch um, them now. I will say this: that that's what they should have shown the first time. You can see mm. what it's adding now. Yeah. Like honestly, you could you could go. Oh right, that's what it's doing. And all right, fair play. A lot of it is just stuff we've seen before in VR, but turned up to eleven. But I think that that justifies it. You know what I mean? Like that gravity glove thing mm. completely makes sense the moment you see it working. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You you kind of like I get it now. I get it. You're gonna feel incredible. But it's um, it, I think the only problem that I've got with it is that there's such a barrier to play this game that everyone everyone wanted Half Life to come back, and the Half Life universe has come back, and there's such a barrier to entry. It, it's, it's weird, uh, isn't it? It's a huge shame. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The thing is, I remember, though, do, you that... mean, do you remember when Half Life Two came out and it was like install Steam and everyone was like, "That is a massive barrier to entry." <laughs> <laughs> and now it's like, yeah, buy two grand's worth of equipment. <laughs> but you still uh, needed a pretty cool. good PC when Half Life Two came out, you know, to play it because yeah, it was which was a bit. The main thing I remember because being a student at the time, so I was in private accommodation, but everyone I knew who was in halls were just like, "This is a fucking nightmare!" Like I'm having to tunnel through my own like apartments, internet security, just to get Steam to connect. Luckily, obviously, people who work in IT departments or universities tend to also be nerds. So like a couple of days later, they were like, right, we're going to open the firewall so you can all access Steam and authenticate your copy of Half-Life 2. You've got two hours to do it, and then that's it. But it was, yeah, it was, everyone was just going fucking nuts trying to get it working. Also, internet security back then was not really a problem, was it? Yeah. Like, like, Relatively speaking, really yeah, know. I guess not. But, it was so fun. Do you remember? The, I remember when I f- moved into my first ever flat, mm. and I had to wait three weeks for the internet to be installed. <laughs> I still had the internet because no one fucking put Wi-Fi passwords on. It was just another bother. <laughs> so it's like you would just go oh, look, number sixteen, like flat <laughs> sixteen Wi-Fi. Okay, I'll log on to that. Brilliant, free Wi-Fi for for a couple of weeks. This is Brilliant. the thing, isn't it? Like it, it's going to be our our generation's equivalent of you know, like old people are like, oh, you know, we never used to lock our doors. Like it was just everyone knew each other and it's fine and we're going to be like yeah we just use the same password for anything if you used a password at all or no one was bothered it was (laughs) yeah 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 yeah, totally (laughs) 
you want to hear also about the story? Oh, that, yes. That, that silence yes. was like a dagger in Sean's <laughs> heart then. <laughs> well, I won't fucking bother next time. From Go here. on, James. I so he also said um, Half-Life Alex is a full-fledged entry in the Half-Life series, both in terms of the sheer amount of content as well as the importance Lux. and substance of its narrative relative okay. to the rest of the series. It is a critical part of the larger story and does push that story forward. And then he also gives some hint that there was going to be some closure for you know for like episode two. He said he said uh, it's not a bad idea for players to have refreshed themselves on the events of episode two before starting Half-Life Alex. You see, the- that's kind of fucked up though, isn't it? Because yep. so few people are actually going to be able to play it. Exactly. Yeah. The, the other thing that rattles me is the yeah saying, oh, it's a full-fledged entry in terms of the sheer amount of content. I don't really want that from a VR game. Like I know you know a lot of people when you know pe- we talk about VR games, you know, like a lot of people are like, oh yeah, it's going to be like another fucking like hour-long experience. And it's like yeah, it's because that's what that's what VR is really good for. I don't yeah, need really a thirty-hour game that I have to wear the fucking headset for because it'll take me months to finish it. That's true. So, I mean, uh, I don't know. Saying that, I have spent three hours straight playing poker. That's, so that's the legitimate problem that you have, though, Dave. That's different. That's different. <laughs> well, yeah, no, that's true. And um, <laughs> I don't deny that. Um, and also the fact that you're just sitting down. So, yeah, so it's, in terms it of makes comfort, all it's, the difference. Yeah, yeah, you're not yeah. fucking moving about. Like, yeah. you can't play super hot VR for more than, like, an hour no, God, tops no. No. you know what I mean because you're just like fucking especially when you take that headset off and you're just like, <laughs> you're in a completely different part of your house yeah. <laughs> you just think how the, yeah. how the fuck it ended up in the bathroom <laughs> <laughs> it is a weird experience yeah. but um, yeah no it's uh, I, I, I mean I'll be fascinated to see what the reviews are no, I won't. I'd be fascinated to see what people say once it's finally out. I think I, I, I always love podcasts um, for video game reactions, really, because mm. you usually get them as they're happening, like as in bits. You know what I mean? It's not just at the end of a game where someone's written a review or whatever. You usually get them as they happen. I think that's a more honest way of reviewing a game. Um, although it, it does mean you, you need to wait a few weeks to get like the final thoughts mm. uh disco elysium coming up later um <laughs> the, but but i also the fact that you can tell when someone is more taken with the themes if that's the right way of saying it uh than actually playing the game itself yeah. like i i thought the reaction to uh death stranding on podcast was fascinating uh, like you heard, you heard when people legitimately loved it, and when people thought that they should love it, and maybe yeah. that's me looking into things a little bit too much again, you know, overthinking things. But you certainly got a sense of that when people were talking about that on podcasts that you would never have got listening, uh, reading a written review. Mm. So yeah, once that game comes out, I mean, I'm I'm really li- like looking forward to hearing people talk about it. But uh, yeah, I. I I'm not going to rush to the nines, tens that you see at the end of tr- traditional <clears> reviews <throat> and and sort of take that as as the real sort of reaction to it, you know? Yeah. Matt, you must be uh, uh, having I'm, a breakdown. I mean, I've got a semi. I can't, I'm right, so... can, I, can I ask you something? Yeah. Is this more important to you than the Kojima game? Definitely. Absolutely. Well, before that come out, because you were going crazy about that Kojima game before it came yeah, out. Yeah, I mean, I I, I like Kojima's games, isn't it? I mean, like this is this is another Half Life game. This is doesn't get much bigger, really. Well, if say Sega announced that they had a console coming out, where's that? Well, from? no, okay, like yeah, that that will be bigger. Uh, right. But in terms of games, this, oh no, I guess another Sega rally. Anyway, <laughs> regardless, yeah, I'm really psyched for this. I Apple can't announced wait. a console. Where would that fit? Um, this will be better than that. This would be better than Apple. Okay, yeah, I'm trying definitely. to think of other things that. Yeah, go on. This is a good game. Yeah. Say a new Sega Rally. Where would that fit? Oh God. Well, that's. <laughs> um... Oh, that's like asking me to choose between two children. I'm not sure if I like. Th- this is this has had like so much more. New like, Fighters Mega Mix. <laughs> no, this is more important than that. I mean, I'll right, be excited that's for that. New Fighters Mega Mix. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm a new, to... new Half Life game. It's like they they come. You know, they, they don't come around that often. You know, uh, th- this is big. I can't wait. I can't believe we're, it's out. It's out this month. It's out in twenty, in like a fortnight. Oh God, yeah, it's, it's like soon. Two weeks it? today, it's out. Jesus, mad. Um, I, I, I'm hmm. fast. I can't wait to hear the discussion. I can't wait to read the reviews. I can't wait to play the game. I hope my PC runs it. My God. Oh yeah, you'd be alright. Right. Okay. So we got a sense of it. So it's not top top, but it's up there, right? 
I mean, very few things beat a new Half-Life game. I'm extremely excited. I need well, to we found, we found that a couple of things already do. So, yeah, but we <laughs> have a new Sega that's... Rally. Okay. And... New Sega Rally, new Sega console. So Sega are higher than Valve, but no, I Kojima's think lower than Valve. It, it, they're all in the same melting pot. Have you got any more news, James? <laughs> <laughs> that's the, well, that's, yeah, I just think because we heard about Death Stranding on two podcasts and that we never mentioned well, again. So I don't... Well, yeah, yeah, but... that. That's I think that that is different. That's like a Jiva game. Like we know what happens. There's a huge hype cycle, and then you play it. And like, okay, well, I'm not, I'm not playing the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> this is Valve releasing a new Half Life. Yeah, game. We, yeah, we all know how okay. that cycle goes. Says man who was really hyped for Death Stranding. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, I'm very much in the cycle. <laughs> Where was Google Stadia? In, uh... <laughs> Nothing tops that. Nothing tops it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Any more news? Uh, well, there's an HBO Last of Us series, but I, does anyone care about that? This is I'm very excited for this. Hell yeah! It's it's from the producers of Chernobyl. It's HBO. Yeah. You've got you know one them um, obviously you know I like Last of Us. I love it's one of my favorite games of all time. It's HBO. They're obviously known for extremely <laughs> extremely good quality TV shows, and it's produced by the person who did Chernobyl. I mean. When I heard there's going to be a Last of Us <sighs> TV show, okay, cool. I'm I'm interested, but the fact it's Got that the combination of HBO and the, the you know and the Craig Mazin or Mazin, the Chernobyl producer. That's okay. That elevates it a bit a bit more for me. I'm quite interested. The only now. thing the only thing that that, that that concerns me a little bit is that we've seen a million shows like this and a million films like this. Yeah. What was good about The Last of Us is that we never had that essence of isolation and you you against the world feeling in video games like that. You know, it, that's a, although it was a cinematic experience, the fact that you were experiencing mm. it for a video game was such a huge thing, and that's why it worked so well. And to then convert that back into a sort of, you know, big budget TV show, are people going to give a shit? Yeah. Like, you know, The Walking Dead was so big and so many people watched it that are they going to see this and go, this just looks like The Walking the Dead? Walking Dead oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, that... That is, I guess, my worry is that, you know, it, it, I, I love the game. Obviously, people have their issues with it, but the relationship between, you know, Joel and Ellie was utterly fantastic. Um, but we've seen a lot of incredible relationships, obviously, on TV before. And Friends. F- exa- yeah. ex- 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 Will exactly. and Grace. Um, Roger and Badger. Mrs. Brown Boys. Only Fools and Horses. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. We've seen a lot, like I said, a lot of great relationships uh, that really touched us. Yeah. Um, so, like, yeah, is this, is this just going to be another TV show? But, you know, Chernobyl is fucking excellent. So I think, it's... well, ultimately, it will be another TV show. Sh- no, never sure. will, it, will, it, will it be a good one? <laughs> will it just be another one? Is what I'm saying. Will it elevate TV to another level? I mean, is it going to. I don't know. I don't think the story actually says. So, we don't know if this is going to follow the story of Joel and Ellie, right? This could just be uh, I, I, set I, I, in the will, world. I don't think it will, surely. Do you reckon everyone knows yeah, how that going. story goes? Exactly. That's yeah, a bit... no, I everyone think it'd be. Knew, yeah, well, hold on. Everyone knew how the Walking Dead story went. No, but they uh, diverged it. Diverged, though, yeah, from the comics. Yeah. yeah, I know, but still, they went to a fucking prison, yeah, but no one, didn't no they? No one reads comics, Dave. It's a nerd. Yeah, no one plays um, video games either. Don't <laughs> fucking kid yourself. Do you know what will be funny? Is I didn't realise... Right, so I, I haven't. I never finished The Last of Us, but I know the ending. Am I all right to spoil it? Mm, do you think? I mean, a lot of people may be like, playing it in the lead-up to the yeah, sequel. Maybe. Can we the talk giraffe about it? eats Ellie. Basically, that's that- the <laughs> ending. Sorry, I ruined it for you. <laughs> So basically, the sort of I don't know, twist isn't really the right word, but what you do at the end, right? Yeah, uh, makes you ask certain questions of certain characters, and I didn't realize. Cert- Hold on, you never played this, did you? No, that's what I'm saying. I know the ending, and, and it's oh. to me, it's quite obvious what it's doing. And there's, there's been like video circulating of people just figuring this out and being like, "Oh my god, I never thought of it that way." It's like, and, and it's well, like, and I can just imagine a, a TV idiots. audience just piecing it together immediately. Because it's really yeah. not that complicated. <laughs> Do you, hold on. Did you watch the final cutscene? No. No, I've just had it. I've either read a synopsis or had it explained to me. I can't remember. Okay. All right. Watch the final cutscene. Okay. It is so well done, Sean. Mm-hmm. It is like one of my favorite endings to a video game ever. Like, yeah. it, I, I said it a million times, like, when, just after the game had come out. Yeah. I can't remember if I re- reviewed this or just played it. Um, but the final scene. Nine times out of ten, it would be overly explained in a video game. Mm. And here, it's just a look. That's all it is. Mm-hmm. There's no dialogue. There's no big explanation at the end. Mm. It's just a look from one character to another. And you just go, 
fuck. <laughs> like that is, it's all up to your own interpretation. It's yeah. not spelled out for you, but there is an expression on someone's face that makes you question everything, mm-hmm. and you just go, "Holy fuck! What? What a perfect way to end that game! It was so well done. Yeah, yeah. I fucking adored that shit. It was good. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, yeah. So I, I don't think this is gonna be following the story of Joel and Ellie. I think it'll be same, obviously same universe, probably yeah. same timeline, and maybe it'll be like. You know, maybe you'll see them at some point. Maybe you won't. Maybe you'll hear about things. Maybe you won't. I don't think it'll be the story of them too, because it'll just be very. It's like tough enough to like create another, another, you know, like a TV show from a game. And yeah, there's always always gonna be comparisons, but to actually have the same story as well, it's like, well, these aren't the people that I fell in love with in the game. Yeah, and I think like you know, like we said about the Uncharted film, like people are so tied to those representations and those interpretations of those characters. That to see another actor take that on and be like, well, what are you doing? Why would you do that? This is yeah, already, so already a perfect. A lot of them are cliches, like, yeah. and they're fine in video games because, like, the cinema cliches weren't, yeah. like, you know, completely established in video games. But Sully, in a, what is it? As I said before, that fucking fan made one where <laughs> Sully was in it and he just, he looks like Sully from the games, but oh my God, in terms of film, it just looks fucking ridiculous. <laughs> That does look like Sully, but what the fuck? Um, yeah, and it's like you say, it comes back to that thing of, yeah, video games that really obviously ape, you know, the sort of HBO template. And to then turn that back into an actual HBO series, does it just, yeah, is it just going to come across as a bit tired and tropey? And I don't know. It'd be interesting. I'll say one thing. Um, I haven't seen the film, but uh, uh, Hugh Jackman in Logan basically looks oh, yeah. like Joel from The Last of Us. <laughs> So he'll be a good mate, shout, basically. Mate, watch Logan. It's incredible. Yeah, I've never, I've never seen it. We don't have to. I'll just... just... <laughs> no, well, I, you know what? You know what, Sean? You're not the boss of me. I'm do what I want. Mate, honestly, I just don't take your recommendation seriously. No. Um, <laughs> Matt, you got you got one choice. you got to either play Half-Life Alex or Le- Left 4 Dead 2. Uh, Last of <laughs> Us 2. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> Last of Us 2. Well, what's your choice? Um, that is incredibly tough, but I'm going to go Half-Life, Alex. Ooh. Really? Is that just a safe face? or That's my decision. Let's move on. Well, because right. arguably, right. that that puts you in a more elite group. Because <laughs> like the, the, like we're, we're lucky to be in a position that we can play Alex, right? Whereas any fucker with a PlayStation can play <laughs> Last of Us 2. Who gives a shit? Any fucker <laughs> with a PlayStation. <laughs> Listen to uh, VIP Sean. Yeah, mate. Like, fucking yeah. hell. <laughs> All right, okay. Any any other news, James? No, that's it. You sure there was no book announcements this week that you want to cover on the video game podcast, no? Not not I'm aware of, no. There were no games planned. <laughs> right, should we get to what we've been playing this week? Yeah. I want to start with Sean. Whoa. I want to start with Sean. Um, uh, two games, uh, neither of them will take that long. I've been playing Mario Odyssey, Good. if you've heard of that. Um, I've heard of that game. Yeah. You texted me in the week about it, didn't you? Yeah, I'm back in. Um, cause, uh, so infamously... Uh, always acknowledge that it's clearly great um but never quite fell in love with it the way i think you guys did um i'm still like some of the the worlds in it i'm still a bit cold on but i've just yeah so yeah some of them are shit yeah um, some of them but are just, shit yeah going back and like so yeah so as we discussed i got the first ending but i only had like 200 odd moons i'm now wow. I'm, not, I'm on like 350 odd now i think um and i'm having a great time um it's what so what wait, right i'm interested so yeah. what world did you go back to first like what was your starting point to get back into the game uh the it was the lake kingdom um well, uh, not a great one do you not think i not really like a great it. one a uh, good i i mean I, I think it's got some excellent bits in it yeah. it's certainly not one of the bad ones but yeah. um yeah it's not it's not one of the best ones okay. like, um I, I i mean have you been back to the seaside kingdom yes yet? that is that is probably called? my favorite i think yeah that's it's that's great. one of the ones that where I just went ah right okay no yeah, yeah. this is fucking incredible yeah. like the discovery the variety everything about that mm. fucking kingdom is just so good yeah proper good uh, um, but yeah it's obviously so sort of, yeah having got the first ending you know you can go back to the worlds and it basically tells you where a lot of the the moons are um, and it's, yeah it's just been great just digging through that and like because so many of them it's like okay it tells you where they are on the map but then you sort of get there and you're like well hang on what there's nothing here or then it turns out it's in the sky or there's a puzzle to it or or whatever um and yeah it's just been a really enjoyable 
uh, sort of act of rediscovery, I guess. Um, Because I, you know, I remember a lot of it, but not a huge amount. There's there's bits that seem new to me, and then I notice that I have already collected things there, and I'm just like, well, whatever, do it again. It gives a shit. Um, Yeah, it's been been really nice going back to it. Um, You're you're still in early phase as well, like because you're at a point where you're just running around on these kingdoms and finding moons, (laughs) yeah, and that's fun, yeah gets a little bit tiresome mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden you'll look at your list and go oh shit i've only got like 10 more to get on this one <laughs> well if i just focus on 100 percent in this one i've got 10 of these to get and 14 purple coins so let's just focus on this one for a bit and then that's when the addiction starts like that's so how, when the how pure do you know addiction starts. like what's the thread to pick up when when you get to that point because obviously i'm just chasing the ones i can that are pointed out to me on the map and i know there's way more yeah, but so how do you... use the power. Use the power. Use um, okay. treasure tracker. Yeah. So yeah, if you're totally stuck mm-hmm. and you do, you can't work out where another um, moon is, yep. go to the power. It give you a little clue. Okay. Uh, and that's pretty good. And it, it, and then if you're still stuck, then go to a treasure tracker. You pay like a hundred coins or whatever, and it'll put it on the map for you. Cool. Um, that never tells you what to do or how to get it, but there'll be a little X on the map and you'll have a little cryptic clue. Um, and then you start... Have you discovered any of the chaining ones yet where oh, don't you know. have to do certain things on certain worlds and that then triggers something on another world? Oh, no. To that? No, I haven't. Oh, mate. Yeah, I mean, it's very basic. Yeah, it's basic stuff, but yeah. there's... Um, but they're, they're still pretty cool because then you can start hopping from world to world. And uh, yeah, the, the the one I particularly like, and I've all, I don't think it's a spoiler, but the one where you have to find a cappy within the 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 kingdom. Oh, each kingdom. Have you seen that? Yeah, is this in uh, in the crowd? It's in all. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's in all of them. Oh, okay. Right. So you've probably found that one, but I think it's pretty much in every world where there's a cappy hiding. And when I say there's a cappy hiding, cappy can hide like change into any hat in the game. Mm-hmm. So you're just looking at the backs of characters' heads constantly, waiting for some eyes to pop out of the back of their head, and you're like, "There he is!" <laughs> and you, yeah, you get him, and you get a moon for that. It's fucking great, man. I love that game. Love it. I I would like to see you stream the 500 moon challenge, actually. I was wondering because I, I, obviously by the time this goes out, it'll have already happened. Um, but I was saying because the the secret thing I've been working on has been written for this month, so I might do a couple of streams over the next couple of weeks. Um, Excellent. Yeah. Maybe I'll, yeah, maybe I'll just do a bit of Mario Odyssey. That'd be all right. Yeah, should do. Do you know? Do you know what I fully cannot be fucked with? The fucking the races against the other Coopers. Right. Okay. Hate them. Leave that, them that. till later. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They- they get you know, there's the techniques for each of those. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Make it to, yeah. There's a, what, what what's good about those, right? And this legit <clears> is that you really do need to get the gold ones. Mm-hmm. You need some high level skills. Yeah. So you need to be able to, you know, wall jump, f- throw your hat, jump off the hat, throw the hat again, land on something. You need to do some real complicated stuff. Mm-hmm. But you really need to play for a long time before that stuff comes completely natural. Right, and then Fair enough. when you get to the races, mm-hmm. like when you get, uh, like when you get to that level where you feel in complete control of Mario, mm-hmm. those races are just fucking great because you're doing some wicked shit to beat him by about twenty seconds. Like it's fucking <laughs> brilliant. Cool. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, I, I didn't. I was the same. I didn't want to do the races, yeah. but then towards the end, when I was so used to the controls that I really couldn't wait to do them. Yeah. Uh, were you the same, James? Yeah, it's like you said though. It's once you've mastered things, it it gets really fun. Like the way you yeah, can yeah. just try and f- figure out how to just shave a few seconds off or whatever. It's, yeah, it's um, fucking it's great, great, man. Mm. Yeah, love it, love it. All right. Um, okay. Cool. Anything? Uh, yeah. So the only one, uh, here, only other one I want to talk about. Um, I've not spent a huge amount of time with it, but luckily it's one where the sort of the central hook of it is quite interesting without getting into too much detail. Um, it is Realm of the Clockwork God. So this is the third game in the Ben and Dan series. Um, Previously, there was Time Gentleman, Please, and Ben There, Dan That, which were point-and-click adventures. Um, And this one, yeah, so so it's Dan Marshall and Ben Ward were like the two guys who worked on it. And it's sort of the sort of caricature versions of them are the the two stars of the games, right? Yeah. but what's really interesting is, so yeah, the last two games have just been point and click games, whereas this is... Is this, <laughs> so, is this the platformer? Well, yeah, it, uh, yes and no. Um, so the, <laughs> the joke is that, so Dan is 
he's now decided that he's like so it, it's there's a lot of sort of um sort of meta stuff about like indie games right and where indie games are at the moment and how it's like oh no it's all about expressing things through platformers now it's not about dialogue and, and stuff it's all just um and it's like and and dan has embraced that but ben hasn't so dan uh, like you switch the characters switch between the characters whenever you want and they're both in the same world it's just like a 2d side on thing but dan is now a platformer character while ben is still a point and click character <laughs> Wow, nice. So, this, like, because yeah, because like one of them is like saying it's got to be we got to do it a platform because we need to be like an indie darling. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is like yeah, he's thing, like, yeah. And, and it's like this idea that like Dan's obsessed with being relevant, whereas Ben's like, look, look I'm, I'm old. This is how I do things. I don't care. Like, I'm not moving with the times. I'm not bothered. Um, and yeah, and it's absolutely fascinating because you you switch in between the characters and it's like and you're basically solving puzzles where Dan's got to do a bit of jumping and maybe like, you know, push items around or whatever. Whereas Ben's like, I'm not jumping. I'm a point and click character. I don't jump. I don't, I don't fall. I don't jump. I don't, you know, I don't do anything. I just walk left and right and I can talk to people and I can use items, <laughs> but I'm not jumping. <laughs> like, and so, yeah, so you're just like solving these puzzles that occasionally involve like, you know, talking to people or performing actions on them with, with a sort of point and click style interface. Is but there then, a combination between the two? Like, does it mix it up or is it either one or the other? It's, yes, yeah, so you're constantly switching between the two. Um, oh, that's great. So it might be, yeah, it's like one per, you know, so Ben has to interact with an item that then Dan can pick up and run around and put it somewhere else. And then that activates a switch for, so you sort of, obviously Dan's got more movement because he's, he's a platform character. So it's sometimes it's just about managing the environment to get ben through to the next bit but then like you know ben can like talk to people pick up items so like early it's like one of the first puzzles is you meet an indie developer in front of a pit of spikes um and dan's got to jump across but he can't because he just falls on the spikes and dies but ben can talk to the indie developer um find out that he's kind of an annoying asshole and just push him onto the spikes <laughs> creating a platform to, <laughs> for dan to then jump on and then get across um so that's like the first puzzle um and yeah it's it's really fascinating i'm I've, like, like i say i've only spent about 20 30 minutes on it but i'm really excited to play more of it because it's just such a clever idea because this yeah, is sounds great. this is pc only as well it the is moment, isn't it yeah mm. geforce now mate geforce yeah. now because <laughs> I've, I've read a preview is it compatible of it? with geforce now i don't know i've not checked oh god see i read a preview of it and it looked fascinating because yeah. i just like the sound of the sense of humor i thought would probably have appealed to me yeah you know, yeah that. definitely especially it's, if you are a bit you know if you because it's one of those where it's taking the piss out of indie games but also you would also need to know a lot about them to get a lot of the references and the jokes and stuff so it's you know it's it's taking the piss but written you know taking the piss with with love for what it's taking the piss out yeah. of um which is why it sort of gets away with it um yeah so i'm properly enjoying it i'm really excited to play more of it it, it like, looks lovely as well. It looks really great. And like, mm. the, I can't believe... Really f- has this sort of thing happened before where someone's tried to combine two different styles of game into one? I'm uh, sure there y- must be other y- examples, but I can't. Yoku's Island? Yeah, I guess. No? That's no, not it- good. I mean, it's the perfect answer for you and you didn't seem satisfied. <laughs> so. no, no, Sorry, you could you- Rocket League. Yeah. Why would Devil's it- Third technically did it. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> no. It did, though, didn't it? And yeah. I, I said, as shit as that game was, that fucking... That worked. It, it tried it a worked. new thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and I thought I thought that was the only good thing about it, switching between third person and first person, like first third person hack and slash to f- first person shoot. I thought that was the only good thing about it. Everything else about it was done. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, it, yeah, it's the mix of those two styles, mm. particularly not the fact that it's mixing two styles, but the moment you said it, I was like, I can see how that works and how that yeah. would be interesting, funny, and yeah, there's lots of commentary to be had there, isn't there? There's yeah. lots of material just, to be had on that. Yeah, and it's just the idea that, yeah, they're both in the same world, they're just interpreting it differently, and yeah, it's yeah, it's really fascinating. Um, that sounds I'll fucking great. Probably... Does it nail it, though? You are saying? Does it nail it, or is there... Yeah, I mean, the, the platforming's not, like, incredible. It's It feels a bit weird, um... Like when you're jumping around, the, the sort of the weight of it just feels a bit odd. Um, but it's like it's you know it's not like I've been like fucking up the jumps and stuff and then blaming the physics or anything. It's just yeah, it's got a feel to it that I'm not used to. Um, but it's it's absolutely functional. Um, I don't think it's supposed to be like a super hard platform. Like it is ultimately a puzzle game, but it's just yeah, it's just built around this idea that 
two characters are just operating on completely different rule sets but with the same tools and in the same world if that makes sense um so yeah proper good so far cool that's uh, a nice one that is basically it from me okay well i'll do mine um very briefly because we've spoken about it enough um i finished uh disco elysium hey and awesome all I say, like I wasn't blown away with the ending. There was a, a few moments towards the end that I thought were really good. Mm-hmm. A few moments that I thought were not so good, and one I mean I mentioned to you, Sean, mm. that I can't really spoil. But I thought the very ending, the very last conversation you had, I, I felt it was kind of like just crowbarred in, like as if they ran out of time, or that, that's just yeah, the feeling sort of, I got from it. Very quickly picks up a number of threads, doesn't it? In that it's like... It felt like you were supposed to go back to the police station and <clears throat> discover stuff there, yeah. Rather than have a bunch of people show up and just bark stuff at you, yeah. Like it felt like why are we having this conversation here? This doesn't feel right. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That like that was that was a bit odd. But uh, other than that, I, you know, I I think it's going to be one of those games that I look back on very fondly mm. because there was enough in there for me to enjoy it. But while I was playing it. It didn't. That it had enough there that I didn't like that put me off of it. You know, mm-hmm. like I was sitting there, just I was sighing a lot, um, and <laughs> that's not good for me because I don't like that. So I, I've got very little patience. Um, and there was a lot of like, go over here, go over there, wait, do this, do that, and I was just kind of like, this is needless busy work. Like the story's really interesting, and if it was rolling with it constantly, it'd be great. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, you know, I still. I'm not convinced by the checks thing, you know. I'm still not convinced oh, really? by it. Really? Yeah, no, not at all. I think for the red checks, where right, so there, there are for the those of you that haven't played it, and I know you've heard about this enough, but I don't think we've explained this. So there's two types of checks: there's white checks and red checks. There's white checks that if you fail, they lock out, and you can retry again if you level up in that particular skill. Or there are secret ways to unlock them by talking to certain characters and so on, right? Um, and then there are red checks that are one and done. Like if you fail them, you're locked out. And nine times out of ten, there's a f- there's like two directions you go, right? So it's not like you failed this check, try again. It's you failed. Here's a sequence because you failed. You you've passed. Here's a sequence because you passed. Let me make it clear: the red checks are fantastic. And they work very well. The karaoke scene is probably <laughs> a great example of that. It's a yeah. very simple thing where you can sing karaoke. You pass the red check, you sing it well, and you get a reaction, I assume. I failed it, and I had this <laughs> hilarious moment that I never want taken away. <laughs> if you sat down with me now and said, do you want to try it where you're 100% going to pass it, I'd probably say no. I mean, I'd be curious to see what it's like if you passed it, but I was so happy with failing that, like, and the reaction to it. Basically, I sung badly and then screamed at the audience, shouting them out about how they don't understand my talent. <laughs> um it, it, you know it really did feel like an episode of the computer game show <laughs> um, I, I, it was wonderful but so that stuff i totally get like i think it really works it really works well the stuff where it's like you're locked i'm kind of like what am i getting out of that what am i getting out? what no, am i possibly see, getting out of that i don't agree because i still feel part of that is about like how your character is growing and it's the fact that that is life as well. That's what no, I like. Right. Okay, that. there's two things, two things, right? That's life is a yeah. point that could be made in various other different ways that don't irritate throughout, right? That you can make a make a point of that's life. Like like for example, the red checks make that point. They make that point. Sometimes you'll fail in life, yeah. and it's even when the odds are with you, sometimes you'll fail. They make that point without making it irritating. The white checks don't do that. Right, the right checks lock you out and say no. Also, your point about personality and it's how you're building your personality, that's actually fights against that. Because wow. if you're trying to build your personality the way you want to it, and then it says, Well, if you want this bit of content, then you've got to put points in this specific piece of your personality. No, but that's the point. You're kinda like uh, well, okay. No, but that's but that is again, that's life though, isn't it? It's like you may want that. You may want to be that kind of character. You may want to be this, but then it sometimes doesn't work out. Yeah, like, however life, much you may want it, it just doesn't work out. Be something else, sort of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but that is a point that could be made without it feeling like this is a hurdle you've got to get over. 
Like it, it doesn't, it it offers nothing. It, you sit there, you file the check, and you go, okay, well now I've got to do this stuff just to unlock that check. Like that is not. It's you could also say, you know what, life. If you fuck up, you don't just go to get to try again. You don't just get to do that. Is that well, it, it'd almost be better if they want someone like the red checks, and you just you fail. That's it. I'm not disagreeing. I'm yeah, just, oh, God, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God, yeah. yeah. If it was like that and it set you on one path in that conversation or another, mm. fine. Totally happy with that. That's great. Mm. No, that'd be really the white interesting. white checks, I just, I found them really fucking irritating. What I will say, though, about Disco Elysium is that, um, like, I fully understand what you were saying about uh, the Outer Worlds when that came out. Mm. How it kind of destroyed it for you with the binary conversation. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think this is a huge step forward in terms of that writing, in terms of um, specifically what choice you want to make in a conversation. I think it does that better than any other game that I've played uh, ever, probably. Mm -hmm. Like, in terms of choosing where you want a conversation to go and how to how to play it out, I think this is up there with the best of them. I think Life is Strange does that very well as well, but I think this does it better because there are so many options for different uh, answers, dialogue, uh, in conversation um, and the conversations you have with your own personality and how that affects your choices is is a huge eye opener. Yes, on such a more um, granular so, level, I absolutely love that. Yeah, you, you, t t totally, and it, and it works, and it works really well. So, so I think the more I think about this game after completing it, the more I'll enjoy it. Um, but I will say that last night that I played it, I was kind of like, I just want this to be over now, mm. and that's a shame. Like that's a shame because I think. Uh, that won't irritate everyone. Um, and, you know, especially when you look at this show, I'm definitely in the minority with that. But uh, for me personally, that that was my reaction to playing it. Um, it's just since completing it, I am kind of like, no, that was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I didn't really like some of the directions it took, but that's the game. I don't really mind. Like finding out the, tying everything together in the, what you think is the main story at the start um i had no problem with that i thought it was great mm. um but then the stuff around that <laughs> something else that happens during that scene yeah. i was kind of like not sure i'm on board with that it is, it is <laughs> a curveball you know I mean? to say the least um but yeah it is when you realize some of the stuff that comes out of that if you if you didn't fail it like I did, um, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's kind of weird. Yeah. But anyway, no one wants to hear this sort of chat where we're talking around a thing. So uh, spoiler I'll, cast, I'll, I'll, I'll spoiler move on. cast. Yeah, we'll we'll do something. Yeah. We'll definitely do something. Um, the other game I've been playing this week is Blood Roots. Have you heard, I've heard of this? It, but I, and I've heard positive. I have that people are positive about it, but I'm not quite sure what it is. So I'm excited to hear. So uh, Blood Roots is a game that's come out on pretty much everything. I'm pretty sure it's out on Xbox and uh, PS4, but I'm playing it it's on, on Switch. Stadia? Um, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> uh, but it is. Uh, it's a. Uh, I mean, the shorthand is is. It's like Hotline Miami, um, uh, but the long way of describing it is that it's nothing like Hotline Miami. <laughs> it's got nothing, no... Um, so it's a isometric beat-em-up, I guess, uh, although you can use anything as a weapon in this game or almost anything in a weapon in this game, where you enter a level, it's filled with enemies, and you have to kill them. Um, if they hit you once, you're dead. If you hit them once, they're dead. You know, mm -hmm. or, or they, that changes a little bit later on in the game. But um, yeah, certainly if you ever get hit, that's 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 you dead. You walk into a certain space, you can aggro enemies who run after you full pelt. Uh, and uh, yeah, they've like really quickly and they can take you out in seconds. Um, it's fantastic, but also flawed. Um, so starting with the positives, it's just so much fun. Like it's so much fun to play. Uh, the, the you know the the fact that you can pick up anything and there's such a variety of weapons that you can use. But not only like it's not like you pick something up and wave it and it's just a different thing in your hand. Yeah. Like it's not like that at all. Every weapon seems to have its own unique ability. Like ladders, you can spin around your head, but at the same time you can climb them. Or if you jump or you're holding a ladder, you can sort of use them as a springboard to get up to higher areas. Um, you've got uh, fireworks that you can use to sort of just throw fire at people but also you can use them as a double jump uh, and if you double jump over an enemy the uh, rocket 
fire from underneath it burns them and stuff like that there's hay that you can use to sort of um uh stun enemies and then you can run in and kill them uh or you can set fire to that hay and chuck it and then it just fire sets off everywhere it's it just feels really good um also the the one i say that it doesn't feel like hotline miami is because it's so much more varied like there's so many different things you do in these levels so there are levels that are like hotline miami where it's filled with enemies and you're trying to pick them off one by one um but there are also ones where it's more about there's an obvious path through a level by jumping on certain and uh, certain weapons or using certain weapons and it's all about chaining them all the way to the end so although relatively speaking they're quite easy because enemies are lined up in a specific way that if you set something off it'll kill them all or whatever mm. um actually working that out feels like a puzzle in itself um and it kind of feels like uh, we were talking about it last week about momentum in, say, Mario, mm. how you feel like you're reacting to things on the fly quickly just to make you go through yeah, as yeah. quick as you can. There's a lot of that in this. There is kind of like, right, I've jumped off that. Now I need to land on that. Now I need to land on that. And then if you die, it's an instant restart. You've learned that level up to a certain point. But then after that, you've got to carry on learning on the job. Um, works really, really well. Uh, there's an excellent story behind it with some really fucking interesting ideas. Um, and not really a spoiler because it's kind of like a main mechanic in the game. But uh, if you kill the bosses, man, like so at the end of like a group of levels, you end up at your campfire and at start you just go to a campfire and then you press the sleep button and you're kind of like, why am I doing this? And then you realise that some of the bigger enemies in the game they sit around that campfire with you as ghosts <laughs> and then you can talk to them about what's going on. Like the story is you play this guy who returns to his village and his village has been absolutely slaughtered. Mm. Um, and when you get to the end, you find your gang or your ex gang uh, and all the gang members have obviously torn your village apart. Um, and then they, uh, they shoot you and then chop you with an ax and leave you there for dead, but you wake up and you're acting in your revenge now. Um, and then the first, like, say, for example, the first character you kill is like this big prince or king or whatever, but he's he's obsessed with money and uh, he's a bit of a dope. Um, and the boss, there's a big boss fight, which is a little bit irritating, but still fun enough to uh, pull you through. Uh, once you kill them, they're sitting at your campfire and you can just talk about your past and... Uh, he's still winding you up from the grave like <laughs> while you're sitting there before you go to sleep. It's lovely moments like that that really add to it, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, totally unnecessary. And in fact, you can skip them all. You don't have to talk to anyone. You just go straight to sleep. Um, but but just, like, I wouldn't say, oh, it's adding to the feeling of... Because ultimately, it feels like a silly little, like, puzzle beat-em-up game. Um, but But... The stuff that is there is really good, really well, well written, funny in places, serious in places. Um, and I'm quite excited to see where it can go. Um, yeah, like all your character can say is, where is the leader of this gang? Like That's all he says throughout the whole thing so far. Um, and it just makes you laugh because there's all these characters talking and talking and talking. Yet yeah, that's the only thing your character says. Um the negative side of it, so there are some levels that become a little bit irritating. Um, the There's some platforming levels that really, the the view, the camera angle doesn't really suit. Like there are loads of times where it looks like you're going to land, but you oh don't God, you that's actually the just fall off the edge and die. Yeah, no, it's pretty, that sucks a bit. Um, there's On the version that I'm playing on the Switch, there's uh, a bit of slowdown here and there. There's like a flappy bird level. Um, and during that level, the slowdown was really irritating to the point where it was making me fuck up a few times, and it just made me wish that I played it on either the PS4 or Xbox One. Um, so it probably goes minor... 2D side-scrolling Flappy Bird style, or well, no, it's still technically 3D when you look at it. I mean, none of it looks proper 3D; like it's not like a Mario game or anything. Um, but it, the camera pans round, so it is to the side, like it's side-scrolling, and then it goes Flappy Bird for a bit. Um, which would be a really good part of the game, but the slowdown really irritated me on the, the Switch version. Um, what I will say is if you like Hotline Miami, and even if you liked Hotline Miami but got a bit irritated by how hard it was, I'm finding this slightly easier than Hotline Miami, um, I would say pick it up because, uh, Jesus, it's really good fun. Like, there's some really good stuff in there, and 
the feeling but like I've posted quite a few videos to uh Twitter. Um so if you're interested in it, go and look at my Twitter feed at David Turner's. Um follow while you're there. I need to get those numbers up. Uh I'm a little bit worried that the TCGS uh Twitch uh, Twitter account is getting more followers than me <laughs> these days. So definitely uh, is. <laughs> oh mate, um, that's that's what I want, because I can just delete my Twitter account then. I don't need to <laughs> <laughs> migrate. Yeah, yeah. Uh but no, it's it's uh yeah, like, a, yeah, I go and watch those videos because they're the moments where I've worked out a level and a cool way of taking all these enemies down, and that's a rush. When you do that and the plan comes together, it just feels apt, like, feels like you're pulling off this incredible thing, but the in reality, you haven't seen the 50 times I've attempted it and failed, you know? <laughs> well, um, cause I was, so, yeah. yeah, I was really encouraged when I saw you posting videos because, obviously, that is that is usually an honour only reserved for Rocket League. So... Yeah, it was cool to see. <laughs> yeah, you I mean, special. it's not as good as Rocky League. Don't get me wrong. No, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's that when you watch them, it's hard to tell. But when you watch them, did you sort of get what I was that, like? You, you yeah, it's did obviously you because that actually, fuck, it's all combining together to create this beautiful. Chaos? Yeah, like obviously watching it as someone who hasn't played the game, it's like, oh, well, he's just going from person to person beating the shit out of them. But then you realise that yeah, there, there are systems there, and you like the, like you say all the different items you're using and stuff. You're like, no, this this was not necessarily as easy as it looks. Um, yeah, oh, and it's not automatic either. Yeah. Like it's completely manual. So mm-hmm. you've got three buttons: one jump, one pick up a weapon, right. one fire. So and that can be a bit jarring at first because mm-hmm. you're like you're you'll press, you know, pick up a weapon instead of um, attack. Right, yeah. And all of a sudden you're standing in front of an enemy and you're throwing a weapon up in the air. Uh, at any point you can just punch them, but the, there's a there's like a, a a half a second gap between punching. Right. So if you've got two people around you, if you punch one guy, you can't do anything for like half a second. Yeah. So they've got the jump on you really easily. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it really encourages you to mix up your weapons and all that sort of stuff. But uh, yeah, the imagination, the thought behind it, the levels, the the story, the characters, uh, all brilliant. And if you're if you're in a bit of a funk at the moment with gaming, then then yeah, I can't recommend this enough. Really, it's um, Blood Roots. It's really bloody good. You should give it a go, Sean. I think you uh, like yeah, it. Yeah, does look very much up my street. I'm, Is it uh, single player? I. It's a just, just a single a player. Yeah, just a single player game. Um, but the, you know, like it feels like it should be. At yeah. no point am I saying this needs to be a multiplayer experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's um, yeah, it doesn't need that shit. So what it does do is is fantastic. And you know, I think I've put five or six hours into it, and it's it feels like I'm I'm sort of towards the end of Act Two, and it feels like there's three acts, with maybe some extra stuff at the end. Um, and they're split up with these bonus games where you're put into a level full of dummies, and it's all about there's loads of them. And they're not moving, you can't get attacked, but there's obviously a route through that you have to work out to try and take them all down in the really tight time uh, time space. And, and when I first did one of those, uh, I thought, ah, I wish you could skip these. Um, but then I did, because you do spend a lot of time trying to work out how to make your way through the level to before the time limit runs out. Um, and some people really hate time limit stuff, but it's so satisfying when you pull it off so satisfying that i was kind of like okay i'm I'm cool with these now so when they do come up i'm not like worried about them or sighing or anything um yeah yeah good stuff blood roots awesome. uh, that sounds cool. check it, it out it looks so it's nice really as well. I, I, I absolutely love the color palette like the, the reds and yellows it looks really it nice. looks a bit samurai jack for those who get that reference so a nice sort of cell shading look to it it's really nice yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is frustrating, like because you know it doesn't look like the most most graphically intensive game. Maybe it just mm. needs an update on a Switch to iron out those creases. And mm. um, I'd be interested to play it on the Xbox to see how it compares. But uh, yeah, no, I'm t- I mean, I mean uh, alternatively, I've I've played quite a bit of it because you know it's on the Switch, so I just whack the headphones in. And uh, to be honest, I prefer playing it. I have p- played it on. Um, TV mode, mm. but it really does feel like it's a nice way to play on that that handheld mode. So yeah. Uh, yeah, that's how I've been doing it. It's good stuff. Cool, good stuff. Uh, James, what you got for us, man? I've got. I mean, not very much because I've not really played a huge amount this week. I mean, I've I've gone back to Yakuza Three, which I'm still playing, and it. I mean, it really. This one in particular seems to be a really slow burn, like the start. <laughs> and 
I am starting to get into it now, but I'm still finding it a little bit sort of visually off-putting. Um, mostly because, I mean, all the other ones I've played have been on the Dragon Engine, and this really does still look like a PS3 game. Because this is, yeah, this isn't a, a Kiwami one, is it? This is just no. a port. Yeah. Yeah. And there's some things with it which are particularly like noticeable with that, which is particularly like movement, which is it looks really kind of robotic often, and like they all everyone moves in the same way, and it's like really over exaggerated, and I feel like I'm playing like Grand Theft Auto Three or something like that sometimes. Oh, I mean, not shit, yeah. not that bad, but it's still you know it's still it does take you out of it a bit, which is um yeah, which is a bit of a shame. No, at the moment um, you said that, I I knew exactly what you meant. <laughs> You just get that image of the animation of that character running in that game, and you're like, "Oh yeah, shit, that was like really weird, wasn't it?" <laughs> yeah, and it's and it, it looks particularly odd in this. Um, and also, I mean, the other thing that this has made me appreciate more though is how much the fighting engine has changed, like over the over you know with the like you know the new releases particularly, because this one I feel at the moment is f- so much less satisfying. To the other ones, I and mean, it feels I less mean, satisfying. Dave, well, exactly, you see, that's what I was going to say, Dave. I mean, you didn't like Yakuza Zero, but this feels like like a bad 3D brawler, like in places, mm. like it really. Yeah, go on. <laughs> do you want me to talk about this or not? Are you just going to keep taking cheap shots? <laughs> I'll probably keep. I'm probably going to keep going. <laughs> go on. Yeah. Well, either way, it's <laughs> it's not. It's much less enjoyable, yeah, you know, because of that. Because you you are unlocking like new moves, but they're just not very interesting and not very well implemented either. And it gets really repetitive as well, like really, like even more so than with um, you know, with the with the other games in the series. So I'm not. That's and it's a bit annoying because that they happen so frequently, and it sort of slows up what is already like a really slow game anyway. So I'm not enjoying that quite so much. And also, what's, the, what's I mean, the story like though compared to the? Well, see, that's the other thing because you see, the other thing that these games have been really good at that I've really enjoyed so far has been like side missions, and the side missions in this also feel like a lot less deep than they than they do in like the other in the other games like so far, and they're really like they've always been like fetch quests and like just like conversations or beat this person up or whatever but this time they feel like they have even less depth um than wow. before and it's it really is like talk to this person go around a corner hit someone you've completed the mission and it's a bit <laughs> uh, that's, that's not that's not you know that's, that's not quite as good Although, to be fair like uh, you know this does this probably end up sounding like i'm having a pop but i'm not trying to and um, <laughs> yeah in the game that i played it wasn't about what you were doing, but it was about what, like, the situation was that yeah. was interesting. Like, so, you know, as I said, the one where you become a movie producer in Zero, mm-hmm. it, I mean, you do nothing. You press X a couple of times, <laughs> it means. Yeah. But it, the, the the fun come from it just being a bit weird. Has it not yeah. even got that? No. And that's the thing. Oh, wow. Like the the side missions are not really like that so far. They've. I mean, I've. It's. I mean, the one I did yesterday was just. It was a guy that wanted to ask this girl out, and he couldn't do it because he was too nervous. And the running gag is, is that every time you get involved, the person that you know you're trying to help, the woman like ends up falling in love with you instead. <laughs> and it's like it's just fine, but it's it's not really that entertaining. Not the way you know the way like it's written is not anywhere near as good as in like the other ones. But it may just be that I've not hit the good ones yet. Maybe there are better ones later. I mean, the good thing I am liking about it is the fact that it is a new setting. Um, you know, it's like a completely new like area to sort of explore. But it doesn't have anywhere near the level of depth that Carucho has. So it's not it's not not quite you know there's there's not as much there to sort of get your teeth into. So I mean I'm going I'm, I know that I'm going back to Camarucho very soon like in the in the story so maybe things will pick up as soon as I hit there because I mean the whole point here is this is like Okinawa which means it's like somewhere which is maybe more laid back it's not quite as like hectic as like Tokyo is but it still feels like there's not there has there hasn't been enough there that's really made me feel like I'm connecting with this with you know with this place whereas if I think back to like Yakuza Six, which they did the same thing where you go to like another place which is like a sort of a sleepier, like sort of a port town, and that really felt like it had personality in the way that this doesn't feel like it has quite so much. But it may just be that I've not spent enough time with it yet because I've only played for about what about seven, eight hours or so, and I'm not sure that's that's enough really to say you know where yeah, it sort of stands. Especially I guess if you like, um, you're compared to games you played like four or five. 
you know, versions in that same city. So mm. I guess you're not going to have be as fond about it. But it's yeah. a shame. It's like less detail. But I guess again, it, it's a, it's an older game, so I guess that's natural. Yeah, and it's and it hasn't had the advantage of like having like a Kiwami style like makeover. Which if they had done, probably this would have ironed out a lot of these things. But this is a PS3 game, you know, essentially. So. You know, I have to remember that when I'm playing it. You know, this is something which has been refined and changed so many times, like over the years, and you know, you're getting like the unvarnished sort of. So, side um, of this. so is this so, basically you know, not going to get a remake? It's had this collection, and that's it for PS4 now. Yeah, I I doubt they'll remake it. Um, I think you see the thing is, is for the other games, I think it was maybe. I mean, I have no idea. I'm not a developer, but I'm I have an idea that it was probably relatively easier for those because they were set in like. In a location which was they already had maybe all the assets for and everything for this they'd have to re they'd have to do everything all over again it would be quite difficult I'd I mean imagine. plus like Yakuza yeah, 1 and 2 they were PS2 originally weren't they so you wouldn't get away yeah. with just up it and <laughs> releasing it again yeah. so they needed that that work doing whereas maybe they thought with 3 they could get away with it yeah or not get away with it you know bit... what I mean just the difference wouldn't be as jarring but yeah, yeah. But it is, and it's, it's just a bit of a shame because, like, I look at Kiryu and I'm like, "That's not Kiryu." <laughs> it's, it's the problem. It's, it's like it doesn't look quite right. You know, it's like, and that's just because all the ones I played have been on the on the better engine, yeah. and so it yeah, just yeah. makes it look. And it it's terrible, isn't it? It's like it's so shallow, but it really does make a difference. Like in this case, and I think it makes a difference because of the fact that for me, these games have always been about like immersion and about like the atmosphere and everything, mm-hmm. and because of how it looks, because of how the characters move, you lose that a lot. Yeah. You know, it's um, which is a, a problem. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think you, we got that a bit with Shenmue Three as well, Dave. Wouldn't, wouldn't you think? Maybe. Yeah, I mean, I mean a little bit, but I don't know. I, I mean, it's different for me, isn't it? I'm, I mean, I came into those games late, and yeah, I, I didn't really have the connection mm. that mm-hmm. you've got with with uh, Yakuza. So. Yeah. Mm. So there's that. I mean, the only other thing I've played is I've been playing uh, Murder by Numbers, which was, this was, uh, this has come out, I think it was last week, and I got it, I mean, I was attracted to this anyway, because it's it's an, it's like a narrative-driven, uh, like, sort of visual novel, in the similar sort of style of, like, Phoenix Wright. It's in the very, sense that it's very like Phoenix Wright, isn't it? I've, I've played a bit yeah. of this, I wasn't going to put it on the list, but yeah, I'll, I'll just annoyingly chip in as you try and talk about it instead. <laughs> so I wasn't going to buy it, mm-hmm. And I wasn't going to play it mostly because I'm not a huge fan of Picross. You know, I, I, no, oh, I, love it. I don't like it. It, it, it irritates me. <laughs> I, I'm not. It's again, it's the puzzle thing. I just don't get enjoyment out of yeah. that. I can do it, but I don't enjoy it. Whereas, I mean, like Chen, like she plays Picross games all the time. Like she, she'll sit there for hours and play like, uh, you know, like Mega Picross and all, all of those sorts of things. She thinks it's brilliant. Although she, she always tells me it feels like it's work though. It doesn't feel. <laughs> Like she's like, as soon as I see I've got to get through this list of puzzles, I'm just going to do it. <laughs> and I'm like, but aren't you? In-? And she's like, I'm not really enjoying myself, but I just feel <laughs> like I need to do it. And that's kind of how I feel about Picross as well. I, I can do it, but I don't really feel enjoying it that much. Mm. So I wasn't going to get this for a while because I just thought I don't, uh, I don't want to play a cross game. I'm, I'm not really into that. And I've always much preferred the Phoenix Wright style of like sort of gathering evidence, then figuring out how you're going to use it and everything. Mm. And you don't really do that in this in the same way. Um, so what this is, is th- how this works is that you have scenes where you're sort of having conversation with people, um, you know, usually themed around like, you know, there's been a murder or whatever, and you've got to try and sort of, you know, figure out who's, you know, who's actually done it. But then what happens is you then go into like an investigation mode, whereby you use this machine to sort of scan for things within the room. When you find something, it then brings up the Picross puzzle, you work out the puzzle, and then this will really reveal like an item. Like, so for example, like, you know, like car keys or maybe like a statue that's got blood on it or something like that. And then you, once you've got that item, you can then talk to people and then like present it and see if you can uh, figure out, you know, what's happened. And that's basically what it is. And I see, I still feel like the, the, the puzzle aspect, it turned out to not be the massive stumbling block I thought it was going to be for me because it's quite nice in a way. Whereby you have like long periods of like text, loads of convers- like conversation, and I found myself starting to feel I could do a puzzle around now. Actually, <laughs> I'd like to break. I'd like to break this conversation yeah. up because although it's it's okay, it's not riveting, and it was quite nice to feel like you were doing the puzzles for a break. But then I got close to the end of the 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 uh, the first chapter, 
and change my mind again because they have timed sequences, like timed across sequences, and that irritated me quite a lot because it took me quite a few attempts uh, to to do that, and it was quite annoying. But I mean, the story seems okay, and I'm mean, I'm not very far in. I've only completed the first the first chapter, but it seems like this is like an overarching story which is going to go through uh, like all all four chapters that the game seems to have, and uh, it seems quite interesting. Uh, as opposed to Phoenix Wright, like it, it feels like Phoenix Wright always feels like it's anime. This doesn't feel so much like anime. This feels much more uh, like a not a, yeah more, more like a serious story, I'd say actually. Yeah, and uh, I'm I'm kind of enjoying it. What do you think, Sean? So far, uh, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I mean, I yeah, because I quite like Picross anyway. I just I just thought have have we all played Picross games? Do no, we need I, to explain? I, I, I no, I wanted to I ask about this because I don't even know what it is. Yeah, well, Picross games or nonograms, I think, is the technically the proper yeah. term for them so basically it's you've got a grid um and then it's sort of each column and each like it's it's totally blank some of them aren't but yeah um usually it's completely blank and then for each row in each column there'll be like numbers telling you how many blocks on that row or that column should be filled in so essentially what you're trying to do is draw a picture like a big sort of pixelated picture by using the numbers right and the the whole point is you sort of you have to cross reference like different rows and columns to try and figure things out or you might be like right well based off you know what's in these three rows i know that this column has to be like these blocks have to be colored in and that means that that's you know so i've filled in five blocks on that column so that means that's all the ones on that column so i can blank out the rest and then and it's piecing together like a a very simple picture but using numbers which sounds like I, i'm shit with number stuff um and to me it sounds like a nightmare but it's if if you're okay with like numbers or visual stuff or just the logic of it like it's yeah, yeah that, it's just that, really that fascinating kind really of like sudoku it's, in some... it's a it yeah, is yeah. it's that's what i was gonna yeah. say it's it's really similar to sudoku yeah, I love that which too. i like i mm. I really enjoy doing mm. those whereas this i don't enjoy very much and i don't know why that is i think <laughs> maybe I don't know. I, I find it. I think because it's a little bit more cryptic than Sudoku. I think, yeah. like what you're trying to achieve. Yeah, I think the, the biggest hurdle for me whenever I like get back into Picross stuff is like you can't ever guess. If you are, if you start guessing, you will fuck it up and you will start yeah. placing blocks where you shouldn't, and it'll just it completely mess you up. Once you get your head around the fact, like, no, you only place blocks when you've got a logical reason to do so. Um, that's yeah. That's when you start doing okay, and that's when it becomes really satisfying. Um, and yeah, and like you say, just that, like, you know, there's been plenty of Picross games I've played where it's like, here's an endless series of puzzles, and that's fine, but you do get sort of fatigued with them, whereas this, yeah, as, because it mixes it up with the, the dialogue and the scanning the environments and stuff, it's, yeah, it's really pleasant. So so um, what is the, the Picross game that people play or love? Because I've heard of it, but I assume it is like a a name of a game rather than a genre of game. Do you, do you know what's probably a good one to start with? There's a Konami one on your phone, and it's free, and it's got all cool Konami stuff in it. Um, everyone seems to. Re- I, I, I haven't played it properly, um, but there's like, yeah, what, apparently what's that's it called? Really good. Uh, I can't remember. It's like Konami Puzzle something. Cool. Maybe I'll, I'll, maybe, I'll, I'll yeah. have a have a have a look. Have a look. Yeah, yeah. Google that. Yeah, yeah. Do it. There's also, <laughs> I mean, there's also a whole bunch of them on Switch. Yes. That are like about oh, yeah, on iOS, it's whatever, called yeah, Pixel not, Puzzle like, Collection. Oh, um, that'll do. Hmm, okay. okay. Um, we yeah, have a look. Um, th- I mean, there's no... I don't think there's any such thing as like a bad one as such. It's just the various ways that they all dress them up. There's there's like a series on Android, I forget what it's called, where it does like the narrative thing. So it's a series of puzzles, but there is like a story to it, but I, didn't, I couldn't get into it. I think it was very anime. Um, yeah, but then, yeah, there's the like the Picross series that was on... 3ds and now nintendo switch that's just like is just like a fucking like 300 puzzles <laughs> deal with it um but yeah it's really satisfying nice. really good. Uh, and, and you're gonna keep playing nice. say james yeah definitely uh, if only for the story mm. it's um because it does seem quite interesting so yeah i'm going for it the i forget the name the composer is the guy who did a lot of phoenix wright stuff right it yeah. is yeah it's the same yeah. yes yeah, the same guy so yeah that's also quite nice yeah. cool and that's it? That's all I've got, yeah. Matt, you got anything to add? Yeah, um, I've been playing uh, Black Mesa this oh, week. Oh, cool. Um, this is the Half-Life, the original Half-Life uh, remake that's been going on for like 
12, 13 or 14 years or something crazy. Uh, they finally released 1.0 this week and so it's officially now launched. Although you could have bought early iterations from as early as like 2012. Uh, this, oh, sorry, last week it finally came out. And um, I never actually finished the original Half-Life. Um, for someone who loves Half-Life what? 2 in the episodes. What? Yeah, I just, just didn't. Um, to be fair, the bit towards weeks... the end is fucking shit. <laughs> well, yeah, <it's... laughs> I I I I don't even really ha- how how far I got. I might go as far as like surface tension, which is mm-hmm. like halfway ish. But which is weird because me and again me and Matt Morley used to spend a lot of our time <laughs> making Half Life maps, <laughs> Half Life maps. But basically, um, yeah, I just never finished finished uh, finished the game. But this is a full remake. It's not a remaster. It's not like a HD mm-hmm. version. This is like they, they've redone everything, like textures, like sounds, like vo- voice voice acting. Uh, everything's been real re- rebuilt from the ground up and i've I, i've had such a ball playing this um i was actually desperately trying to get it done before the pod tonight but i'm on the i think like the penultimate level or very close to the end i'm actually um uh so in uh, in the game the, the the bit of the game that apparently everyone was was not a fan of originally was when you go to Zen, yeah. uh, another planet, and that's a mm-hmm. bit actually that's taken in the longest in terms of this this uh, this remake. Like a lot of the rest of the stuff was actually done a few years ago. Obviously, they've been like porting it to new newer versions of like Source Engine and the latest like CS:GO engine to give it more graphical fidelity. Mm-hmm. Um, but the the, the Zen bit um, that that wasn't saying where they just wanted to like improve upon that they actually wanted to like make fundamental changes to that section. Mm-hmm. Uh, to to right the wrongs and and to fix issues that people had um, um, with with that section before, and I've got there now, and it it looks absolutely stunning. Actually, I, I will say this game in in general looks really really nice, but the Zen bits just look fantastic. Now I remember I, the Zen bits. What, what the one where you the bits where you turn up and there's all those aliens just looking around you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah, like, yeah. The, 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 there's like a very early flat, like a, a vision of that, the very start, isn't go it? To the planet. But yeah, but then you get to it towards the end, yeah. don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking hell, yeah. And it just it looks uh, amazing what they've done. It, it, it feels almost like, um, uh, fuck, what's that James Cameron movie with all the blue aliens? Avatar. I can't believe Avatar. 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 It feels quite Avatar. In fact, like Zen. It feels like quite like an aquatic planet, even though mm-hmm. it's not that at all. But it's got that vibe. You see loads of huge like stingrays float it flying around. Do those things have... even come up in the second one? Um, I don't think they do. Well, because the isn't yeah. Because what's cool about it is when you play Half Life One, you're like, there are bad aliens. Then we go to the alien planet and we kill the bad aliens. Hooray, we, we did it. But then in Half Life Two, it's revealed that actually. So that race had been fucked over by the Combine and then the Combine do the same to Earth and you're yeah. all basically just tools of the Combine. Um, yeah. So right. that's, yeah, there's like an interesting wrinkle to it. But, yeah. I mean, I mean, even when you go to Zen and this, like, you, you you have seen like one one type of alien originally and then, and then when you get to this other planet, you see others mm. and like, they're actually like ordering the other ones around and, right. and stuff it's, which is really interesting mm. but no I, I've just been absolutely loving this game um, it, it feels it feels fresh it feels like a new game it, it obviously it's got like some of the Half-Life quirks um, where you well, I, I, I constantly have a sort of anxiety where it's going to crash but you know, it just goes loading uh, it, it's, it's that classic thing where like, the whole game freezes and I'm like oh, don't crash this time but <laughs> I'm not sure any crashes um, it, it, run, it runs perfectly well I mean I'm not running on ultra settings and I haven't got the best piece, I haven't got like the, you know, the most state of the RPC but it looks absolutely gorgeous how much and, is it? Um, I think I was thinking it was like uh, let's think Thirty quidish? I can't remember. Yeah, they, should... they said it'll it'll work on like quite limited hardware, won't it? Because it's it's source engine, and so you can really scalable. Yeah, 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 it'll work on. I mean, it's yeah, fascinating so, that this one they're allowed to charge money for it, right? That, well, it's fascinating they're allowed to complete it, and that Valve are okay with them selling it. Well, yeah. I'm assuming Valve get a cut. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course. Probably yeah. a large cut. I think Andy Kelly's done a good piece actually. Mm. Valve came to them after like because okay. it started off with a bunch of modders in the community said they want to like remake Half Life. Um, yeah, and Half Life came to them. So do you want do you want it to be like an official licensed product, and you get you get better access to the engine that way. Um, of course, yeah, yeah. and yeah, but it, it feels like a fully fledged remake. It's um, as good as anything Valve well, could have done. And you know, a lot of the reviews I've read have said actually, I think it's like this actually manages to improve on the original, as iconic as that was. That's that's what I was going to ask you because like, how does the pacing feel? Because I've heard that that's the thing that they've really like tried to tighten 
like you had to make it sort of there's yeah there's been bits that have been like cut out and you know just so that the, the pacing is better have you noticed that um, at all i um i haven't noticed it that much i, I will say that generally I've, I've been like flying through this game apart from some bits where like it, um i would say overall level design this is is fantastic and i think that's the same with pretty much every valve game i've played like i i, I feel like i noticed level design in in valve games much more than other games just like the way the way you feel like you're just you're you're going along a certain path but it, but that, that is that is indeed the path that they they've tried to follow you down uh but there's been a couple of bits where i'm like well, how, well I, I, I don't know where I, I don't know where i need to get to now because uh, like doors that open aren't like different colored um or it, 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 there's no like flashing objects on the ground it's, mm. you sort of have to have to know what you're looking for to, to get around there's only been a couple of bits so i'm like well, where do i get to here but it turns out there's a ladder just above my head that i didn't see um but no i mean like uh, uh, pacing wise it's, it's it's been fine um and uh yeah but it, it doesn't feel like a game i mean i know it's been like remastered but it doesn't feel like originally a game that came out you know um in what 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 year is it? Ninety eight or something or ninety five? Um, yeah, yeah 98. 98. It, it just feel it just it still feels relevant and fresh today. And I don't think that's Are just because um, of the coat of paint and you know the fact it's running like a really high frame rate. Yeah. Are the fights with the Marines still really exciting? Because they were mind blowing at the time. Yeah, I've talked. I wouldn't call them mind blowing. I, I I think I've actually had like um, a bit better fights with. Um, with the aliens and the marines, I mean, okay. the, the marines are they're, they're actually be, they're better than I remember, but they're still, I think, I think by other standards to that, they're, 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 yeah. they're not they're not exactly that exciting. They, they do flank you, they do like you know they mm-hmm. do, they do sort of um, step back when when they're low on health and then throw grenades and stuff, but they, but they are pretty much just cannon fodder, really. Shit, wasn't yeah. there like a terrible helicopter bit as well? There is yeah. a bit where <laughs> like, like, you just, but... I remember being in like some. Like we were climbing some steel tower or something, and their helicopter just turned up and shooting you like out of nowhere. Oh no god, yeah, yeah. So and then a bit there, with that was a just bunch of helicopter that was even really that, that are kind of just annoying. before, or just after some bit where you're like in you, there's a car in some tunnels or some shit. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, there's you repeatedly get attacked by that helicopter, and then it's like eventually oh, right, yeah. you get hold of a rocket launcher, you know, and then yeah, it's like to try and that. deal with it. Yeah, I remember all this. Yeah, but no, it's 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 just brilliant. It's just brilliant being back in like the Half Life Half Life universe, really. Um, yeah, like, like I said, I'm like a I think like a, a level and a half or so away from the end. I was desperately trying to get it done before 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 this. I was actually playing to like half one. Like a couple of nights ago, and played a bit more last <laughs> night again. Do it, Matt. Get some sleep. <laughs> no, well, I just wanted to get it done, and I, just, I was also that that bit that you're at now is quite long, apparently, because they really have like expanded that. And from the review, like from the I think it was from the Eurogamer review I read, where they said that although it's really good what they've done with Zen, it does start to drag like in parts of that because they've expanded it maybe a bit too <laughs> well, much. Well, I, I will say so, as, as stunning as it looks, like I, it, there's a lot suddenly of like platforming and jumping and stuff. And although you have like a, uh, like a long jump and, and they've changed it so now it's just like a double tap of like the space bar whereas before I believe there's like mm. some weird combination of like run and crouch and stuff oh, they're, yeah, they're, yeah. They're still, it's still like there's still a lot of it and when you're getting chased by enemies and also like trying to like you know uh, trying to get these like pinpoint jumps on like floating platforms or others you you know land back down the water and you might get killed and stuff there's been a couple of weird platforming bits so I'm like it just feels it just feels a bit off but um but yeah, uh, I'm I'm loving it, and uh, and it's also really good to just play a game on a PC, which I haven't done in forever. It's just nice to be playing back on like mouse and keyboard, and yeah. Um, yeah, see, I'm not. Uh, yeah, I haven't gone back to mouse and keyboard, but I'm I'm enjoying being primarily a PC guy at the moment. It's nice. Yeah, it's just it's just great, PC and um, and and basically, I I I do want to even before I heard those comments earlier Enjoy about Alex, I, I am gonna. Guy try and get this done and Half-Life 2 and Episodes 1 and 2 done before before Alex comes okay. out. Because I, I just want to be back in that, that world and I want to remind myself of everything, everything that happened and especially, obviously, what um what I said earlier about, you know, it's probably worth refreshing yourself on what happens prior to Alex. So Yeah, I've forgotten most of the story. Reminding yourself of everything that happened. Reminding yeah. you of all... You didn't I've... finish Half-Life 1. What's that say? You remind yourself of what happened at the end of Half-Life 1. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what's your problem, Dave? 
I don't know, mate. I'm just how long have I'm you in got? One of those <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely brilliant. I'm sorry. I'm so glad I played it. Um, <laughs> if if, if people, you know, if you, if, if you guys or people listening and thinking like they enjoy, enjoyed the original Half Life, I'd, I'd super recommend getting back into this. It's brilliant. And yeah, I, I, I'm really excited to get back into Half Life Two next week uh, once I get this done. You smash through that. Alex. It's a good game. You know, I, I, there, again, there was. I, I found out with all the Half Life games that there's periods of it where you, got, uh, it drags it out for no reason. But I think that was, that was just of its time. Yeah, wasn't but, it? I, but also, I think just we do that all the time. Touched on then. last week. That, that there's definitely like some charm in in those quiet bits where it's like dragged out. I mean, not particularly that being yeah, Half Life definitely. where you sort of driving along down, down down the beach or down the coast. You know, mm. many games would have just made that super short or not really had it at all, but. Yeah, you feel isolated, I mean, and you, feel, and you like it... get to stop and look out and take God, like you know, all the stuff you've gone through in that game up to that point, and it's like suddenly you just get this like quite drive along the coast where it's like quite otherworldly. Yeah, that's true. Mm. Uh, so yeah. it also makes it feel more like a like a lived in world. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. the environmental yeah, yeah. storytelling is just it's just top notch, and it's like you, you can <laughs> see why this game is so iconic. And uh, I was gonna say because you forget how like Half Life Two especially really sort of pioneered that stuff. Because I remember finishing it and being like, "Well, there's no fucking story," and then. You know, there's articles being like, "Oh well, actually, if you look at like newspaper clippings on the walls and stuff," I was like, oh, "I'm not fucking doing that. It's just shit. <laughs> Give me a fucking cutscene." Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And now look. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, now look. Now look. And that's what we've been. That's what we've been playing this week. Um, before we get to the emails, <laughs> should we find out what in what ways we're oh, weird? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to do this at all. <laughs> <laughs> Who are we going with first? So if you didn't listen a couple of weeks ago, uh, we wanted to contact Chen, James's wife, to find out what weird stuff that he does. Um, and then we could talk about it on the show. And then we thought it was only fair if we did it with everyone. <laughs> so each of us has an email from the other person's, from someone on the show's wife, listing out weird things that they do. And we're going to go through those emails now and discover more about each other, aren't we? Eh? Let's see it like that way. We're <laughs> we're we're you know expanding our friendship. I'm actually fascinated. <laughs> I'm actually fascinated to see what Jill's written about me. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's great and she's because called, obviously she's called all of them. I would because <laughs> I, I would like <laughs> to think that we know each other quite well by this point. But obviously, this is definitely going to throw up stuff that we didn't know about oh, each other. <laughs> yeah. So who's going to go first? Don't mind. How are we gonna do this? I mean who who's got who? So I've got I've got Jill, Matt's wife. I've got Chen's. I've got Joe. I've got Sean's. Mm. Right. Okay. Does anyone want to step up? I mean I'll I'll go if you want. Okay. So So well when you say you go no whoa 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 whoa. Okay. When you say you go, that means someone's got to read oh, out. Oh so James news. has to read. Okay, go on then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't go. <laughs> I'll, ex- I'll expose someone. <laughs> That's not how it Very works. brave of me, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, Carl, let's hear news. Okay. So, I mean, he's got four. Okay. Which I think is right, not too bad. Let's start with the first one and then Jay. Wait, you just <laughs> read out the first one. Okay. Sean spends forever on the loo. Yeah. Like every morning is over an hour in the bathroom. And, and, and wow. Yeah. Oh, well, that includes Apparently. shower as well. Yeah, go on. What? Yeah, but even with a shower. Oh, no, Sean, no, no. I'm not hour. saying it's not bad. I'm just saying it's not just the toilet. Uh, uh, well, Sean, sure, do you have one in bathroom there? in your house? Uh, we've got two toilets, one, okay, one okay, proper okay. bathroom. Yeah. Good. There's more. How, does she just open the door after you're done and they're just like, just wet wipes? <laughs> <laughs> Are you in there for an hour? Could you keep trying to flush them? Like, no, get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I mean, it's, it's yeah, I'd, either I've got my phone with me or I might take the Nintendo Switch or my iPad and that's it. Half an hour just poof, goes. There's well, that, definitely that's, a that's wank going on. Because there's more here. Okay, it says, Wait, hold on. If half an hour goes like that, what's happening to the other half an hour? Shower, sort my beard out. You know. Wank. Definitely wank in there somewhere. I uh, don't Go know, on. man. Not not generally. What? From, Hang on. Uh, what else are you Maybe doing? Maybe it's an occasional right, okay. treat. Um, an occasional <laughs> <laughs> If it's a particularly exciting one. <laughs> or just a really boring one. Um <laughs> <laughs> An hour? Wow. Fuck. I thought it was good because in the mornings, I tend to take half an hour in there. Mm-hmm. That's shit shower, sort myself mm-hmm. out, you know. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> Sorry, I meant like shaving that. Not, <laughs> yeah, we know what you mean. Sort out my swollen balls. <laughs> and I thought that was a ridiculous amount of time to yeah, no. spend in the bathroom. No. I like, Fucking Sorry. double that. I mean, so presumably, Sean, you've actually shortened that because I, I would assume now since becoming a father, you've probably got more things on. So what was it before you became a dad? Was it two hours? <laughs> oh, no. Are you kidding me? Surely it's longer after you become a dad. But, the, but because you just don't want to go back out <laughs> yes, there. It's like, well, no one, no one can query me as to what I'm up to. Oh yeah, I'm in the bathroom, yeah. that's yeah. normal. Yeah. Mega point. That's fine. No one bother me. Um, yeah, no, it's about the same, I think, pre and post Isaac. Um, I mean, it depends, obviously. Like if, like, because obviously some mornings, like it's just me and him, um, and he's now at the point where I can yeah, just I'll like, see right, you now, son. Yeah, <laughs> like I just basically like yeah, stick Paw Patrol on, make sure he's got something to eat, and then he's quite happy for me to like you know run up to the bathroom, do what I need to do, and then get back down again. That is a fucking game changer, it is isn't it? So good. That is a game changer yeah. when you could go to the toilet and not worry about yeah, yeah. that. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, it's so um, good. But yeah, like generally uh, speaking, if yeah, if it's either he's not around or you know me and Nu are both here, then yeah, I'll take my time. <laughs> you know the next step, mm. and I'm not there yet. Mm-hmm. Is when they can wake up in the morning and sort themselves out. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah, no, they I mean, do. Yeah, my kids do that already. And that that Elodie really right. does that now. Next, Elodie next. now like goes goes downstairs, no turns off the alarm, turns on the TV, Whoa. get get some food. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Orders a pizza. Um, although the other morning she like woke up at like I don't know six or six, and like the alarm starts going off, and like she got upset. Oh, I think she might have put like, the wrong number in, or she might have like. In a sleepy oh, thing. No, that would be horrible. And I was like, oh my God, as a kid. Yeah, 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 it was fine in the MP. That's incredible that she oh, can do it on her, noise. on her own. Though. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. She can basically do everything in the house apart from a turn on the bathroom light because the, the, the cord is slightly too <laughs> of course, short. Yeah, too high. I guess I could. <laughs> slightly too high. Yeah. But everything else she can do now, it's mad. Yeah. It's, I mean, I miss those days Mate. where she's coming out of bed in the morning, but now it's just like, I hear like beep, beep, uh, beep, 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 and then, like, yeah, just Netflix on, and that's it. <laughs> Teen Titans go, that's, that's it. <laughs> Amazing. Man, that sounds too good. Yeah. Right, okay, next. There's, there's more. I was going to say that. I mean, yeah. you didn't oh, let me finish. Oh, what? Still on this one? Yeah, okay, still, go on. So, so she's like, so Shane spins forever in the loo, so got morning for an hour in the bathroom, yeah. and then in the evening <laughs> is a minimum of 30 minutes. Um, then she says, honestly, it has annoyed me for years. Um, yeah. uh, when you say evening, I mean, this is like sort of when you're brushing teeth for, for bed, is that? No, no, it's usually like when I get home. Okay. Oh wow! I mean, it depends. Any I've, I've started that? like now that I've been eating more sensibly. It's actually it's a relative uh, rarity. Huge difference, yep. isn't it? Huge yep. difference that yep. is. Yep. I tell you what, I used to have to wake up in the night a lot to go for a shit. Really, in the like, night? That's how bad really? I got. Yeah. Wow, mate, I was a big boy, wasn't I? <laughs> <laughs> was, uh, there's no getting around that. <laughs> But that makes a massive difference. Yeah. yeah, I used to wake up with like stomach cramps and then have to go and sit shit. on the bog for like 45 minutes. Yeah, it was fucking bad, oh. man. I was eating a lot of shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what else we got? Uh, but yeah, yeah. Okay, point number two. Mm. Sean claims to be a very safe and calm driver. Oh, he... God, this is the one I was expecting. <laughs> this is the one I was expecting. But he gets so annoyed at other people to the point where several times he has either slowed right down or sped up to get behind someone who's overtaken him. <laughs> oh, no, you're not oh, like wow. one of those, are you? <laughs> well, you're several times you do, over you several do years. Brake checks. You also? You do brake checks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck it. Oh, Sean, that's all. <laughs> nah, it's not. Don't do that. It is. Uh, do you know what? The best thing I did with driving yeah. ever, because I t- was totally like that, so mm. I'm not like. You know, don't think that I'm high and mighty looking down on you, whatever. I used to do that all the mm-hmm. time. The best thing, I think it was about four years ago, mm-hmm. I was driving down, someone cut me up, and I just thought, ah, oh, who gives a fuck? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I just thought, someone was trying to cut in, and usually I'd block them off, yeah. and then shout at them and honk and do the wanker <laughs> sign and all that. And then I got to the point where I just went, you're one car in front of me <laughs> who gives a flying fuck yeah. and the, and from that point on i'm not stressed in the mornings driving to work anymore because it's just like uh, who you want to okay is, if that's what you want to do then just do it i don't care <laughs> as long as i'm not shouting and fucking my heart's going See, i used to I, I don't care anymore i used to get like annoyed at being stuck behind people who are going too slow and i've grown out of that 
because after a while you're like actually literally makes like five seconds difference by the end you know by the end of your journey <laughs> yeah um but yeah if people are trying like if people are being like aggressive or um just not particularly careful that really pisses me off people who don't indicate that fucking oh, that is, yeah no that's still a trigger yeah, for me yeah, don't yeah. get me wrong <laughs> that, that annoys me but also people that drive really close behind me that yes. really annoys yeah, me that's and what I, do. I do often on the brakes, just a little fucking well, I, I do often just slow down so like massively when people do that and just drive really slowly. <laughs> oh, so, I don't do that. Yeah. I used to, in my angry days, I used, I would like adapt the rear window spray thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if they got really close behind me, I'd just wash the back window and it would just spray all over their oh car. My God, that's like, amazing. Furious. amazing. Yeah, that used to piss uh, them Just off, to be clear, but, the reason uh, New will have thought to put this is that she got bollocked by Isaac the other day for her driving <laughs> Oh, ooh, Lovely. Yeah. a little bit of a fight back yeah, here. Just, I'm sure. just saying that. Also, that's... It, was no, well, it wasn't actually a driving. It was uh, uh, X Gone Give It To You came on a Spotify playlist and she started having a dance to it. And apparently Isaac started shouting, Mommy, you're driving. Be careful. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, James, yeah. Uh, are there any more points about his driving on coming up? No. Okay, you have been let off there, Sean. I'm not going to bring up additional ones, but you have been let off because that's not what I was thinking of. <laughs> Why? What was the other thing? Do you remember at Sam White's wedding when she was talking about your driving? No, I don't. And she even sent me a photo of it. No, what was this? I don't remember this. Do you really want to know? Do you want this on the podcast? I honestly well, I don't remember what it is, so... Okay, all right. How fast do you drive on the motorway, Sean? Oh, uh, I see. Yeah, no, I've yeah, I've been caught speeding again recently. I've got to go to... Whoa! What, what? How fast do you go? Well, hang on, what, on, no, no, like, no, on no. the motorway? 70 miles an hour, On mate. the motorway? No, that's not what... Did, are you Are you trying to hide this? <laughs> I've honestly like no idea what you're talking about, Dave. <laughs> it was either 52 or 62. She took a photo what? of the speed on the, on the motorway and you, were, and you were saying it's efficient. Well, yeah, doing 60 on the motorway is fuel-wise is really efficient. I don't often do it, though. I usually just go 70. Right, okay. So should, was she exaggerating the point then? Because yes. she said that every time you're on a motorway from start to finish, you go 60 miles no, an hour. No, no. Oh, right, okay, fine, fine. Um, but yeah, I recently got caught doing 48 <laughs> in a 40 on the motorway because I didn't realise it was a uh, variable speed. You got done for speeding again? Yeah. So how many points you got now? Well, none, because... The first time was in the centre of Liverpool, so I did the speed awareness course, and then the second time was on the M6. So you do a motorway awareness course, which is apparently completely different, and therefore... <laughs> How many awareness courses brilliant. do you need? <laughs> There's lots of loopholes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, I've never had a point on my licence, which is surprising, because I used to drive a lot faster, mm. to the point where Chen text James when we were driving over from Leeds once, who was watching him on, what is it, Find My Friend or whatever, yeah. on the iPhone, <laughs> saying... Well, he's going a bit fast. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. But yeah, I've calmed down with that shit as well yeah. now. So I can't be bothered to get angry on a car anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what the fucking way to live your life. Yeah. Uh, go on. Okay, uh, number three. Uh, falls asleep to ASMR every night. I've woken up several times to find him tangled in his headphones <laughs> with his phone on his chest. <laughs> Absolutely nothing weird about that, Sean. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Just, you need... You need... <laughs> Get Bluetooth at least. You get strangle yourself to death in the night. That's true. Well, I really want to get those. Um, have you seen Dave? The the sort of it's just like a headband that's got headphones in it. So you like no. it's just like a fabric headband you just wear around you your head, and it's just yeah. <laughs> no. So you can just go to sleep. Because no, I I I get to the point where I take them off just as I'm falling asleep. I've never fallen asleep with them on. Uh, yeah. Only when I was like, if I go for a nap or whatever, I tend to leave them in. But. Um, yeah, no, like uh, I, I before bed, I managed to get whip them off just before well, I fall asleep, it? so I get that warm fuzzy feeling. Prior to it. this, uh, that's what I thought I did, but apparently not. So. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of ASMR, yeah. Matt, I sent you, I sent you like a step by step guide. Have you tried that? No. Right. Yeah, okay. Oh, Matt, are Fine. you not a you know an ASMR He's, guy? He hasn't tried the wet wipes. Like, <laughs> no, I haven't yeah, tried that either. I've just got I've just got a feeling that and stop me if I'm wrong here, Matt. Matt would if he was trying ASMR, he would be focusing on how he's feeling and if he should be feeling yeah, something right it, now. Maybe. Yeah. Whereas yeah, I'd overthink it and it won't work. Whereas if you followed those instructions, that will tell you if the if you're receptive to it. Yeah, I think. Okay. I, I do want to see yeah, if I'm receptive because it sounds hot i mean you would probably already know because as soon as i heard about it i was like oh yeah that's i've had that all my life 
Yeah, um, they, yeah, it's that same reaction, yeah. isn't it? Well, you, people won't get that anymore because ASMR is like well yeah. known, but um, uh, that reaction when I remember you t- saying that. Have you ever had a weird feeling where like someone's like either looking at your computer or cleaning something in front yeah. of you, and you just like get this really weird, odd feeling in your whole? And I was like, I was looking at you like, I thought I was the only yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> and it's great because you'd remember like things that triggered it in the past and how people would be like yeah it's weirdly relaxing isn't it like <laughs> because no one knew what the term was or that the way they were feeling was like a, a common thing so, yeah it was never rea- relaxing for me really i was i would always go why am i feeling like this this is odd <laughs> and then get freaked out by it but now that i know it's cool uh, <laughs> it's well cool uh next uh, final one is uh, Pepsi Max with every meal, yes, like mate. constantly. She always yeah. fucking nicks it. How's that allowed? <laughs> she can. <laughs> she brings that up as an annoying habit. Yeah, she always she always steals a swig of me Pepsi Max. Pepsi Max with every meal. Uh, pretty much. It's like Pepsi Max has been a major thing for reducing my sugar intake because obviously I was mad on my fizzy pop. Um, so find, finding yeah. out that Cherry Pepsi Max, I, I normally hate um, artificially sweetened stuff, but Cherry Pepsi Max is okay. Um, so I just have it all the time. I've been getting into Pepsi Max as good. well recently. It's good. That's probably my favourite of the diet yeah, drinks. Absolutely. I know it's controversial, James. I know it's controversial. Sorry, mate. Yeah, it's not, yeah. Let's not get onto this. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, well, leave it, Dave. Leave it. <laughs> <laughs> I think you got off quite light. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. Nothing too weird. Yeah, yeah. The toilet one was pretty bad, but I think you did all right. I think you did all yeah, right. Yeah. Um, so we, should we do James? Yes, uh, please. I'm excited about this. How many are there? I'll oh, be really terrified. <laughs> right, okay. There are six, seven, eight, <laughs> and not what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think. Why can't I read that? <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Right. There's eight points here, yeah. but I think you'll be all right, James. I've read through these, and there's nothing too crazy. Right. Oh, actually, the first one's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> here is the list. Hope it's okay. He he wears Christmas <sighs> socks all year long. Oh, James! It was what? <laughs> he wears Christmas socks all year long. You monster! Yeah, just bloody loves Do Christmas, you know what? mate. That you, you know, <clears throat> maybe that's where all his joy is. It's in his socks. <laughs> in his socks. <laughs> he's no, the it's just, it's, bloke I know. It's just because I open the sock drawer, I get a pair of socks out. I don't <laughs> Why care what they Christmas are. Socks? Just put them on. <laughs> well, because for, well, because I wear them so often, they get washed, they go back in, and then yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> let me ask you this: Christmas sh- socks are thick, aren't they? Because they're be- to be worn at winter. Are you walking what? around in really thick socks in the summer? Wearing shorts? No, they're not. They're not that thick. They're just regular thickness ones. Garrett, what's a regular thickness one? <laughs> yeah, it's Do just you, a regular sock with a pattern thin on socks it. In the su- do you ever wear trainer socks? Like those, those, sorry, ankle socks. Do you ever wear them? From time to time, yeah. Are they? Have they got like a picture of Rudy? <laughs> <laughs> no, they're like they're just they're similar to those, but longer, obviously. You know, I mean, occasionally it's awkward because you know, like when you're at work and you're like in a meeting or something, and then you know your your trouser leg goes up a bit, and you're just like, oh, okay. That's- there's, 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 there's Rudolph. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, but it's just I don't care. Also, also their musical. It's whatever's closest to hand. It's whatever's closest to hand. James, you should put them away with the Christmas decorations and then bring them out <laughs> in November, December time to really get a benefit. It's a waste of money, that, isn't it? No, just buy some other socks for it all year round and bring them out and you'll feel special at Christmas. Okay, let's move on. The next point, fucking hell. This does not belong on this list because I think we will all... Right, okay. He never knows where his keys, wallets, AirPod... Air, AirPod uh, case are. Right, AirPod or AirPod case are. Mm-hmm. I yeah. mean... That is not uh, me. Yeah, that's that me. is not me. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, of course it's not. Matt's, <laughs> Matt's got a specific shelf for that I, shit. I know, it's it's my, it's it. Yeah, go on, sorry. No, no, go on. I, I basically put everything. I, I just know everything where everything is at all times, and and really, that's the way that it should is. Be. <laughs> that's quite a claim. That's that's like, that's that's a that is a superpower. Um, no, we, we've got a, a, a shelf for keys. Everything else can yeah end up pretty much wherever. It's just oh, and Joe just missing. picks stuff up. Yeah, jo, exactly. when she's tied in the flat or whatever, it's just she just picks stuff up and put it somewhere. It's like what are you even right? Even if I've it, like. 
I'll put my headphones down for a second, walk to the, out the room, walk back, they're gone. Where are my headphones? Oh, I don't know. I've been tidying up. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> See, that, that's what happens to me as well. But then also the kids as well, like, yeah, stuff yeah, goes yeah, missing yeah, all the time. Yeah, that's pretty bad. It's that's really irritating. Bad. Yeah. As I said, TV with a button on it makes your remote beep. Right. <laughs> Next one. He never carries cash on him. Well, I never do that. Yeah, now, yeah but so it's 2020. I can't have a go at you yeah, for that. Come on. What do you need cash for? Yeah. Don't I know. don't. I ask her. I don't know. We have this argument all the time, and I think it's ridiculous. <laughs> well, in what situations are you having the argument? When well, you get when you, when you okay, get in situations where we, where we, yeah, exactly. <laughs> when you need exactly it's supermarket trolley, in an arcade, yeah, locker yeah. in the swimming pools. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, usually, right, I, there's a remarkable amount of soft plays that just don't accept card. It's fucking yeah. really annoying. Yeah, that's a point. That is a thing. Yeah. Uh, and also park calves. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> right. Um, okay, next one. He likes cold curry slash pizza. Oh. Right, I don't like. I don't like cold pizza, but I understand it's a thing. Cold curry. Yeah. What's wrong with that? Cold curry. What's, what's right with it? I mean, yeah. why not just reheat it? Because I look, you can't I just like it, the taste you? of it. I like the taste of it, like when it's cold. I, I mean, you know, like if you get like you know takeaway or whatever in the evening, and there's a load of it left over. No, nope. I mean, I, I, yeah, the first bit, yeah, <laughs> the, the leftover bit, no, I don't understand. That, that. is weird, James, because the whole point is that when it's hot, it's it's more of the the smells coming out of it, and that's I know, I know, that's but what I informs still just like your the taste buds. I still just like the taste. So you just want it to taste cold. less. Is yeah, that... but it's fine. It's still just it's easier as well. You just get it Do out. Do you eat chicken, Matt? Um, well, I thought that was like a massive no-no. Ah, you can get away with it once. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, once in a lifetime, no. or once in <laughs> for the chicken? Yeah, I never um, reheat I mean, chicken. I mean, I'll be honest. Basically, I don't reheat takeaway because there's no need. Because I've, I've eaten <laughs> yeah, it. So it's already gone. Bloke. It's already gone in the tum tum, hasn't it? <laughs> um, and I'll bum bum. Yeah. <laughs> Next point. He still can't remember his children's birthday. Well, we know that. That's Got a long running joke. Yeah. How bad are you with that, James? It does happen sometimes. I mean, the worst thing is when you know when you got to call call up for like a, a doctor's appointment, and they ask yeah. you like, "What's the birthday?" And, and you're like, time, "Well, I'm like, uh, uh, well, they've had four this year because yeah. I've been moving <laughs> it about." Um, no, that, okay, that does one. happen. I get that also when I have to call the school for like what class they're in, like the name of the class because you know they change it every year. Like it's a different one, yeah. and I yeah, always yeah. forget what what the name is. That's that's annoying. Yeah, and no, yeah. I'm pretty bad with that. Stuff I can as just well, imagine so I the doctor being like, "What's the child's date of birth?" He's like, "I don't know." Fucking. <laughs> that, that's the thing. Like, one, once, <laughs> once I was like, I just need to check on my phone. <laughs> <I'm> like, <'cause... laughs> I'm a bad parent. Um, all right, this is a bad one, James. He always wears headphones on the school run. What? Oh, yeah. I, I, not always, but I do <laughs> well, sometimes. It said always I don't know, in the, the message. Word, the word always is here. Yeah, Dave read always. Right. Why? Why do you wear them on the school run? Because, that look, I've already had a whole fucking morning of them <laughs> since, like, six. <laughs> right? It's it's like, it's, it's been... Like, okay, my son is often up at, like, half five, six, like, every morning. He's in the bed, you know, he's all jumping all over everything. You've had, like, that, that you've had them arguing with each other all morning and, like, winding each other up, like, the whole time and just going on at each other. By the time you get in the car and you're, like, on the way to work, you're like, I've just had enough of this. And wait, then wait, I was, like, you wear I'm headphones while you're driving. Else. Second? Sometimes, yeah. James, I do that sometimes, well, always, yeah. always. What was wrong with that? You can do that. Headphones while you're driving? Are you kidding me? So you can't hear anything. No, can. but you, I mean, it's not illegal. Pretty sure it is. I'm pretty sure it I isn't. I looked this up once, and it, I think it's one of those things where I'm okay. Someone will correct us, but it's. I don't think it's technically illegal, but it's kind it's of frowned fra- upon. Yeah, it's frowned you know, upon, okay. but it's not illegal. Yeah. Uh, you get away with it, boy. But not, then unlike also... speeding, Sean Bell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're fine. Keep your mouth shut, Sean. About but the also, law. often with that, I only put one in. Like, I don't usually have both of them in at the same time when I'm doing that because I'm usually listening to podcasts. So it's oh, just that's fine. all right then. Um, but how long is the, the journey to school? Like two hours, I think. No, it's only <laughs> exactly. It's only like it's what like ten minutes. It's like so. What's the big deal? Are you doing it in the playground as well when you're waiting for him to go in? 
Uh, no, don't do it then. Uh, but I, I, I do it, it when I'm waiting for them to come out, though. Like, you know, when you're, like, standing yeah, there Yeah, I waiting. do that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's I don't want to talk to any of the I'm parents on. when I get in that situation. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You're not allowed yeah. to. There's signs up everywhere saying no headphones, no phones. Really? What? You're joking. You're, yeah, well, no, no. And I'm fine with that. Yeah, I am fine with that. But, it, it, uh, yeah, it's, it, it says no headphones, yeah, no headphones, phones. headphones, no phones. Is that specifically to make yeah, you yeah, talk yeah. to the other parents? No, no. It's it's like the the idea is... I think it's got a bit of a hippie mentality. Uh-huh. The the school that my kids go to, the the well Harry goes to, the the idea is is that your kid doesn't want to come out and see you looking at your phone. Right, your kid wants yeah. to see you looking at you, them. Yeah, that, that's to what the sign child. says. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They oh, they've got like a slogan. It's like they want to see your smile, not your. Oh, I don't know. I no, 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 go on. No, no, okay. Finish like, that. Well, I can't remember. They want to see. You, they want to see your grin, or they want to they see, want see your grin and not your. I want to see you happy and not looking at your appy. <laughs> I don't know, something like that. It's something like that. I can't remember. I'll see your it dome, that memorable. not your iPhone. I'll, I'll get a photo of it. I'll send it to you. Right. Um, <laughs> oh, I can't because I'd have to take it off. Yeah. Phone. I want to see your grin, um, not you looking at your memes. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, Sean. <job. laughs> That's not the one. Is that not it? No, okay. <laughs> no, it's not that one. Uh, mm. Right, okay. Only two left, James. Only two left, and this one. Two. I am. I am. I am in this camp with you. It's fine. I'm in this camp with you. He doesn't drink tea. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't drink I've tea. Tried with for tea so many sake. times. Yeah, so have I. I've always tried with tea. I've always gone. Okay, I see why people like it, but not for me. Not That's for me. exactly how I feel about mm. it. It's like yeah, it's fine but i don't see why everyone is so mad about it i really don't yeah. it's you know yeah 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 yep. uh right uh and the last one is he never in capitals knows his schedule <laughs> even even though i've added all the birthday parties sleepover holidays to the shared calendar i mean we know this don't we <laughs> yeah i mean i, I mean I, i'm with you there Chen. I've, I've done the same thing <laughs> i'll say this i'm just as bad well, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> but like, um, but Famously I have so. to. It gets, it gets to Friday, and I go, "What am I doing this weekend, Joe?" Like that is it. Joe it's is also, my diary. The other thing, right, is you see the other detail she's missing out from this oh, is that oh. no, we're fighting it's, it's, it's back. Like, it's like, yeah, definitely, yeah. She's put it in the calendar. Okay, so I'm looking at one now that just says like, you know, some girls' party next week. Right? <laughs> like, is that a quote? <laughs> Very vague. <laughs> But then there's no actual detail though, though, about what I've got to do for that. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's it's like it's like okay. Well, I know there's a party happening. Am I doing all the driving? Yeah. Well, yeah. What capacity? Because actually... I'm the only one who does. Yeah. And but then also like you know what you know what time is this? Yeah. There's just loads of there's loads of questions that that are follow up questions that are not in the calendar. You see. Well, start adding them. Yeah. I was start gonna, adding I was the follow up questions. Can, in the calendar. You, like, can you email other attendees of the meeting saying uh, further to this meeting request? Do you have more <laughs> yeah. information about location and time, etc.? I mean, I'm expecting there should be attachments here. Yeah, that exactly. I've got, like, exactly what I need to yeah, be doing. This request doesn't yeah, make any sense. Yeah. Uh, right. Who's next? Uh, I'll, I'll do you, Dave. They were good. They were good ones, actually. James. Yeah, they were good. I, was yeah, they were. I remember reading them straight away and see it saying you got off light, but actually they were pretty yeah. good. Mm. Okay, go on, Matt. How many are there? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven. No, no, there's what? not. No, no, there's there's just six. <laughs> six. Okay, six. Oh, Seventy-four. Okay. Right. okay. I'm um, worried about these. Dave's Joe, weird. Joe. Right, because Joe, as you know, like you guys know, Joe, she is fucking brutal. <laughs> like, so these are not gonna be. And if there's one thing she likes, it's fucking having a go at me. So uh, I'm a well, little bit I mean, worried. I, I, I think she's been quite kind to you, which is a bit of a shame, really. Um, yeah. First one, constantly plays that threes game on his phone. So annoying, even if we we're watching something intense like Line of Duty. <laughs> yeah, and no, I do do that. But like, um, here's, here's the thing that winds me up, right? <laughs> I'm going to fight back. Um, well, she's not here. When... when <laughs> When she's watching EastEnders, I am not allowed to say a fucking word, mm. right? She's watching, uh, like, if I say, oh, Joe, um, I spoke to, she'll pause it, look at me and sigh, <laughs> right? And I'm just like, okay, forget it. Just watch your thing or whatever. But if at any point during the day I'm on freeze, she will start talking to me and get furious with the fact that I'm on my <laughs> phone. And I'm like, well, 
We haven't spoken for 20 minutes. I'm just having a look at my... You're always on your phone. No, I just picked it up to look at it. And then you started asking me something. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, I like Freeze. It's a good game. You should get it. Um, we'll only ever wash up in Marigolds. <gasps> um, She's, yeah. That's annoying. Right, so oh, mm. so I wear rubber gloves when I wash yeah, up. Fine. Because I, I must have done it like five times in my life and I hate the feeling. No, it's, it's horrible, yeah. isn't it? I prefer it, just, is, yeah. it is a horrific feeling, right? But I wash up every single night and after a while, your hands just break. Like I thought I had skin trouble because they were just like cracking and dry Mm -hmm. and horrible. Um, And I thought, well, I've just got to, I've got, (laughs) I've just got to do it. I've just got to wear gloves because it's otherwise I'm going to have an old man hands by the time that I'm 40. Yeah. Yeah. As uh, an ex professional dish pig. Yeah. Go wear them gloves, man. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, good. Nice, Sean. Nice. Also, she started buying and wearing gloves before I did when she <laughs> used to do the washing up about eight years ago. So, uh, yeah. yeah, I am. Um, I'm not sure if it's called dermatitis or what, but when I worked in bars mm. and I was younger, I got a thing where um, I like my hands were wet for so long and yeah. washing things up and stuff that it actually like it hurt to get water on my hands. I basically yeah, yeah. had to wear gloves for for a period. And I think it's common with. Um, with like hairdressers and barbers and stuff, because yeah, I yeah, guess yeah. we were like cutting wet hair and washing hair. Yeah, it, like it, it. My hands were in absolute agony just from like putting water on them. It was, mm-hmm. it was mad. But I, wear your gloves, yo. Yeah, mate. Well, Safety. I, I mean, not not now because even every night it's still like it's still not that bad. I mean, it's not as bad as it was, basically. Right, makes up his own. No, but you do no work. I've got working man's hands. I'm not on the <laughs> dishwasher. I'm typing. <laughs> makes up his own lyrics to songs that usually hear have the phrase "suck my dick hole" in them. <laughs> Unless the kids around, then it's usually about poo. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. Right. I can vouch for that because you, you, I've been in cars, <laughs> like car journeys with you, Dave, where you've done that, and it's it is a bit annoying. <laughs> I think because honestly, I think suck my dick is like the most vulgar, horrible, <laughs> like phrase ever. Like it's awful. What a like it's awful. So slipping it into some hit <laughs> is just hilarious my to me. Hole. I find it Jesus. so funny. Um. <clears throat> I can sing you one, like uh, <laughs> not not the suck my dick one, but I um, had to come up with it on the fly because we yeah, it, a lot of these times I'm making them up on the spot, right? And we were singing about how Harry was a Jedi to the Imperial March theme <laughs> tune, and I come up with this. I thought this was quite good, totally off the cuff. Uh, was it? Um, oh, I can't even fucking remember it now. <laughs> All that build up, I come up. Harry Turner did a poo into space. It floated into Darth Vader's face. <laughs> I thought that was that really is, good. That is good. That. I enjoyed that. Yeah, he la- he la- he laughed at it. So, who's the winner? <laughs> Joe. <laughs> Joe, yeah. Uh, uh, El- uh, Elodie's obsessed with like poos and pops and all that sort of stuff. So, it is funny, any though. mention of that sort of stuff, it's just, you know, yeah, she likes it. Yeah. Oh, I don't know, I'll try and stamp that out. I hate it. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she's into it. She's into it. I'm sure she'll grow out of it. But at the moment, she's constantly saying pops. And... I just, I mean, Ash was doing the other day, and I said, "Look, come on, this is like the lowest form of like humour. You want to do something, you know, better than that." And uh, he, he agreed. <laughs> He's not He's that kid. <laughs> and he agreed. Oh yes, father. I didn't oh, think of it. Just so yeah, beneath me, right? I yeah. am six. So <laughs> to interrupt <laughs> so like you, you boy. Yeah, we, are, we are the, we are the elite. Are we <laughs> yes, we are some. <laughs> so you, you can do you can do better than that. And <laughs> I'm not a turner. I understand. <laughs> right. Go on. Talking of poos, he goes about eight times a day. I can never spend less than fifteen minutes in there. It's a wonder he's still got a job. <laughs> fifteen minutes, not so bad, it seems. No. <laughs> um, I, I, I would I would say uh, I would say eight's a bit much. I would say three, three or four. Mm. Uh, it's that's bad. I understand that because I hear people talk about it on like other shows and stuff. Because this does get mentioned a lot because everyone finds it quirky, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and they're like, "Oh no, I'm regular. I go every morning." And I'm like, "What? <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm uh, no, I'm a good three or four times a day. I like to be. I like to just get rid of it." Yeah, yeah. There's no point keeping it on you, is there? Oh right, okay. I thought I'd get some fight back for that from you. No, but that's I, fine. I, I, I'm uh, I'm definitely like five plus times a day. For, really, for I think that's healthy. Who wants to walk around full of shit? Uh, yeah, I think the amount I do it is not know, healthy. It sounds like quite a lot. It doesn't freak me out half as much as when you know people are like, oh, I'll just go like once every three days. Yeah, that's mad. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, like Joe will do that. Joe really? will go. Uh, uh, yeah, 
She yeah, she say, like, "Oh, I haven't been for five." They must days. be like and fucking like, cannonballs. What? Yeah, I know it's ridiculous. I'm like, "What are you doing? <laughs> How is that even possible?" Yeah, yeah it's uh, like shit coming out your ears and that. <laughs> that stuff freaks me out. I think mean, Jill's also saying, "You know, I went on Monday. It's Friday, Jill." <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> go now. It would be like twenty five times since you last did one. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just today. I know diet um, accounts. He very much enjoys it. ironing every day. I mean, we need oh, yeah, that anyway. Yeah. That's not. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, mean, I love it. Uh, every love every day, every day. Um, yeah, every morning. Yeah, of course. Every morning I'm ironing. Fair dues. What time do you get up in the morning? Uh, well, it depends. Um, anywhere between five o'clock and seven o'clock. <laughs> Fuck yes, you've got like an ironing. You've got yeah. You've, okay, I guess washing up in the evening. There's a lot of things to do in the morning, isn't there? I wake up. I have my breakfast. I get in the shower, I iron, I go to work. That's all right, I know. Do you have mornings Standard. where you have to do, like, sort the kids out and stuff, or is that... Does Joe take care of that? I must admit, I've been bad at that. <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't really know. Joe does it all. Um, <laughs> and, and it's, mainly, it's, it's mainly because when the second one came along, it was not... We didn't say we'd do this, but we sort of naturally went into, I'll sort out Harry, you sort out okay. Charlie, right? But the problem is now Harry's six and it's like, for sort of me, it's like, so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, even now I'm just like, right, yeah, go and brush your teeth, mm-hmm. go to the toilet. And that's it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's, you don't really need to do anything. <laughs> so it's like, I've got the, I, I'm on the winning. At the same time, though, like Charlie fucking hates me and loves mu- and loves his mum. So, uh, <laughs> you know, swings around. <laughs> and, uh, and finally, oh, yeah, and he can't go to sleep without watching those weird videos of people yes, having mate. physio <laughs> mess- yeah, mess- yeah, ma- sure. um, massages, etc. <laughs> yeah, because mine's the unintentional stuff. Yeah, so yeah, it's all, yeah. uh, that people who are not into ASMR don't know that. <laughs> so that sounds weird. But yeah, mine's the unintentional <laughs> stuff. So it's usually just going to put a bit of pain. <laughs> the only, the only double vision stuff. Okay, right. Any double vision? Any, Any double, double vision? vision? Oh, this is... <laughs> Stop doing this. <laughs> Oh, it's so good. It's so good. I will say that the the comedy behind it is, is absolutely incredible yeah, as yeah. well. The comment sections are just fucking <laughs> funny. Uh, yeah, like, yeah. Okay, there's no point in me explaining it because you have to explain the whole background. And by the time I've done that, everyone's yeah. asleep anyway. So, um, all right. Okay. Well, I got off quite light there. Yeah. She could have. She could have gone yeah, worse than me. I knew that sucked my dick thing thing was going to come up though. Right. Also, <laughs> right. That. Uh, there was an episode of um, Celebrity Big Brother with Lion- is it Lionel Blair, the tap yeah, dancing yeah. guy, the oh, old yeah, guy, yeah. yeah, where they did like a BDSM episode where they were all dressed up in like leather and all this, and they were whipping each other and mucking about. And the in the last part of that scene, it cut and it just showed Lionel Blair in like some leather outfit, and he just looks and goes. Sat my deck and then it just <laughs> cut off. <laughs> I laughed for about an hour. An hour. <laughs> it's just so funny. Right, better do, uh, uh, right. do Matt, haven't we? Yeah, do Matt. How many has he uh, got? Four. Uh, yeah. uh, 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 pretty good, I think. Um, <laughs> uh, actually, uh, there's, yeah, there's one we sort of already knew about. But yeah, okay. Uh, number one, for some reason, his handwriting is all in capitals, even his signature. Um, now I do this as well. Um, yeah, I'm a. Ha- I'm yeah, a yeah, it's just writer. because my cursive handwriting is fucking illegible to anyone else. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm awful. Yeah. My handwriting is appalling. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah I have my handwriting is appalling. I, I basically barely really have to write things down with pens and yeah. So it was bad anyway when I was doing it every day. But not my signature though. Sorry? Yeah, no, my signature is just me trying to write my name as fast as I can in cursive and that's just sort of it. Same yeah. it, it it's literally just yeah, a squiggle. Yeah. It's a squiggle. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't think I've got I, the worst I don't do my, in the world. my signature in capital letters but I, it is just like a line. Like, I've had many poor comments like saying like, it's basically the worst signature they've ever seen in their life. But <laughs> I wish yeah, I had a really like, elaborate, well. exotic one but it's just really like a line yeah, and a bit like, of a squiggle. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll send you a picture of mine. <laughs> it's awful. Uh, number two, this is, this is one we basically knew about. Uh, he moves his toes all the time. I mean, constantly wiggling away, day or night, <laughs> literally all the time. The byproduct of this is that his socks, slippers, and shoes always get holes in them, so he's very expensive no, to whoa, maintain. Whoa, whoa. Not his socks, apparently. His socks are fine, but his slipper that's what we established. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. It was, so well, I've got holes in my, my socks as well. 
These little fingers go for everything. Socks, shoes, slippers, don't matter. <laughs> Do you cut your toenails a lot? Yeah, of course, yeah. It's not oh, about that. It's just that. a constant movement of the toes themselves. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm terrible at keeping my toenails like short yeah. because I just forget about it and it's not a thing. And then all of a sudden I realise that my toe hurts and I'm looked down <laughs> and it's like, fucking hell, I've got claws. No, no, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not disgusted. Well, because it's, it's finding that, the time to just sit you got down shitty arse, with your feet out and just have a go, <laughs> innit? It's just weird. I don't know. Uh, yeah. This, this is a good one. He always overestimates sauces. He'll put so much mayonnaise what? or ketchup on his plate that it would be impossible <laughs> to use it all. Gross, man, and not very sustainable. <laughs> the, the weird thing about it is that he denies doing it even when he's actually doing it. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's Matt's personality, isn't it? It's it's the it's the Maxin min max yeah, thing. Like, I've gone too yeah, far. Everyone else well, around him going, Matt, do you think this is maybe a bit much? He's going, no, <laughs> no. I don't know if you say this. You've gone too far, Matt. Give me another bowl. <laughs> <laughs> I, need, I need more chips. There's not enough chips, really, for the sauce. That's the problem. Not the sauce. I had to, I'm bad for mayonnaise. I used to... So when I worked in catering, and I did, like, food selection wasn't amazing, so basically every day you just have, like, chicken nuggets and chips. Um... Both of which are good with mayonnaise. So I'd get the little the little sachets and I'd use about five yes. of them. And it got to the point where the chef was like, look, can you just go in the walk-in fridge, just get a spoonful out of the big fucking bucket of mayonnaise because you're going through all the fucking sachets. <laughs> <laughs> a spoonful out of the bucket of big mayonnaise. Yeah, that was like heaven. And you know it's the good stuff because you can turn the spoon upside down and it sticks. <laughs> right, last oh, yes. one. Uh, he has to go to the toilet at the last possible minute before a film starts at the cinema. So it's always... T- oh. no, you see, yeah, so I read that and I was like, well, that's not too weird. Then she adds, so it's always tense while the trailers are on. So does that mean you sit through the trailers and then you have to dash out? Oh, no, no that's mental. No, no, I don't do it at all. Okay. Well, yes, I mean... <laughs> I, I, no, I, I basically I obviously I have to um, go to the toilet before I go to see a film because yeah. yeah, 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 because yes. during the Matrix I almost shit myself. <laughs> but anyway, we will move on. Something else. What? Um, but no, tell that tell that story. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to that. But but it, but no. I, but we'll I also don't want to miss the trailers. So I mean, but it's it's mostly because if I'm going to cinema with Elodie and a lot of family and like we've got to, like make sure we're in and then I'll quickly go to the toilet because I haven't had a chance to go beforehand. Okay. Read that again, Sean. He has to go to the toilet at the last possible minute before a film starts at the cinema so it's always tense while the trailers are on right okay so that's definitely not what she's saying she's saying that you watch the trailers then go to the toilet then I, mean, come I, back I, I, I don't do that and I've never done that and she is a liar Jill what are you saying is Matt, Matt and, and... <laughs> yeah, well, please do I love the conversation Jill what Matt's saying is you lay there. <laughs> you lay there. <laughs> and I'm concerned because she says I do that and I've got like a signature in capital letters, so I'm, I'm alarm bells now. <laughs> does she know you, Matt? I don't think she does. <laughs> yeah, um, The Matrix, I, I hadn't gone to the toilet before seeing The Matrix, or if even Whatever. if I had, it was just, you know, I was due my second or third or fifth one of the day at that point. And, um, but it was like clearly, but I, I, I don't think I've ever left a film in the middle of it to go to the toilet. If I have, I certainly don't remember it. Okay. And oh I'm like, God, I did. And I'm like, hang on, I think we are, we, you know, Neo's the one. We're getting fucking close to the end here. <laughs> but I was also absolutely desperate, and I basically I was shaking the the, the seat so much to <laughs> to try and keep it in. The people actually told me to stop like moving around. <laughs> But I was like, uh, look, I, I, I'm not going to miss the end of the film. I'm just going to like, just, you know, hold on and hold my breath and hope I don't shit myself. But it was very, very close. And it was actually kind of ruined the end of the film for me. Amazing. Yeah, I've had a bunch of films that I've had to just walk out and go to the toilet from. But the, the worst was Coco because A, I, loved, I was loving the film. Um, uh, and B, I, I really wanted to watch like the rest of the film and it's quite a distance from the toilet to the cinema. I don't understand why toilets just aren't off to the side in cinemas with screens in them showing the film. Yeah. Like, uh, just do that. Um, but yeah, so I dashed to the toilet, went for a wee, dashed back, and then, uh, you know, you're walking out from a very light place into a very dark place, and I started running up the steps, <laughs> and I saw, like, a toddler like, oh climbing my God. along one of the steps as I was running up, so I had to quickly adjust, and then stacked it in front of the whole cinema. Oh, my uh, God. 
yeah, and we went with not only my family, but uh, my wife's family. <laughs> and there was loads of us there just pissing themselves, laughing at me, <laughs> like <laughs> nearly stamping on a child, avoiding them, but clattering into the floor uh, in front of a whole audience of people. Wow. So, I do wasn't a good remember one. once, like, really, really needing to, like, to piss when I was in the, like, in the cinema and just, but holding it because I didn't want the, you know, I wanted to see the end of the film. And then I remember then afterwards going out because I was just desperate to go. And then I was like, it's not, it's not coming out. And I was like, I think I've broken myself <laughs> like somehow. <It's, laughs> it took ages before it. It's I, trapped. You know, I, don't know, I, I think I just I like, I held it for so long. I always, no, I get, just... yeah. Uh, if I'm like in a really bad situation, yeah, I'm absolutely dying for a piss. When I do eventually get to go, it's, yeah, it's loads slower than when I just go for a normal one. That's probably no need to examine that any closer. I think that's definitely fine. (laughs) (laughs) So um, one of the ones that Jill didn't catch, which I remembered last week, is that if I play games downstairs, now it's it's rarer now because I'm just used to staying up here and playing them, but if I go downstairs play in the lounge on TV, I basically just hate sitting down on the sofa. I just never... What? I'm not really a fan of it. Well, what do you do? I don't know, just... Well, so we've got this all like... You don't sit on the floor. Well, I mean, I, I have done, yeah. That, that, that's a big one. But what what, what my what my preferred position is is that we've got this, like footstool. It's like, you know, like a obviously like soft top, a lot of forward wooden legs, and I basically sort of like go over that sort of on all fours, but like with what the so fuck? I'm like I'm like sort of what bent over fuck? this <laughs> <laughs> bent over this bent over this, like footstool, and that's my preferred like way to play games yeah, in, not, in the doesn't lounge. Doesn't that like hurt yeah. your neck? Um, I don't know. I feel like I'm sort of in a good, like, engaged you position. You absolutely coated me for having my TV <laughs> in my corner. <laughs> yeah, but I don't. Well, when are you, you moving your TV shit? every time? Well, only if it's angled to the rest of the room. Anyway, you d- don't. No, that's <laughs> anyway. nowhere near as weird as what you're doing. Well, no, I mean, I could sit on the thing. Fucking but getting I, into I, yoga positions. Yeah, I just I feel more comfortable. It's like I'm more of an engaged position rather than just like sitting down. I just feel more like I don't know. What is more? I mean, surely sitting down is the most engaged position you could I, I, ever be. No, because it's just too relaxed. I, I, I just don't sitting on sofas. I just don't rate. I don't rate it at all. Amazing. Wow. Okay. I just, I, I, I am generally more comfortable sitting on the floor than I am sitting on a sofa. Hey. And like, Fuck. So, sometimes I'll like get off a sofa and like sit with my back That's... against the sofa, like on the ground. I just prefer that. <laughs> You need a fucking massive armchair, man. There's nothing <laughs> I mean, beats that. We've had multiple good sofas and armchairs over the years. I just, I don't know. I just generally do feel more. And sometimes I like lay on the floor and watch TV. It's just I, better. I often find myself sitting on the floor when I play games. Actually, what? Like, rather than on the sofa. What is I going usually, on? Yeah. I usually start. I, I usually start on the mental. sofa, and then after a while, you know, what? just end up on the floor. But then I usually <laughs> go back to the sofa after a while. Just you slowly off, slide and then down. Don't bother to fix it. Yeah. It's like, well, this is where I am oh, now. Sometimes you just want to get a. A bit closer, you know, and then you know, wow. that's mental. Yeah, that is mental. Uh, but, I, but I can't believe she she didn't she didn't mention the whole like you know uh, all fours over over the footstool. I mean, I mean, I mean maybe maybe, maybe she thought now nah, that's too weird and embarrassing. I won't bring that up on the show. No, I don't care. <laughs> I thought she would go really go in. She didn't mention the clapping, didn't mention like the weird like yeah. shouting, rapping, you know, in the club style, all sort of stuff. Got off like there, right? Yeah. Anyway, emails. Well, I think, I think, yeah, no, we know. So, I, I mean, what are we doing? Should we? We should probably should we just save them, put them to a side for next yeah. week. Sounds good. Uh, this has ran way longer than we thought it would. <laughs> oh, it's been good though. Um, um, but thank you for summary, all the emails and the tweets. We do appreciate it, but it's gone on a bit, isn't it? Yeah, we'll we'll we'll, we'll get to them. We'll yeah, we'll get just, to them save next week. just won't we just ask. Put that tweet yeah, just out. Won't ask for any next week. It's sorted. Yeah, yeah, we'll pick them up next week. Um, but I think I think that was quite a. Refreshing thing to do. I don't feel any any worse about any of you <laughs> guys. So I think that work. It's good to yeah. share. I think that worked quite yeah. well. Yeah, I think actually they're all pretty pretty. Uh, I definitely know that embarrassing at all. I think they're quite safe. You say that we're going to get a flood of tweets yeah. this week. Let's face it; they're all things that people are going to pick up on and go mental about. So at Computer Game Pod <laughs> on Twitter, at uh, David Turner's on Twitter, <laughs> yeah, at Matt Murray on Twitter. Um, didn't yeah, one of our get, listeners get say touch. he like works for DFS? Yeah, you got to sort Matt out. Can we just get free? No, <laughs> like, uh, we're looking to move soon, and w- when we move, we need new sofas. Okay. The person that works for DFS, can you just send me a sofa, <laughs> like a good That's how it one? Works. 
Cheers. I don't think that's how. <laughs> Pretty sure I, that's how it works. Mr. DFS <laughs> is a big fan <laughs> of this show. Um, right, okay, and we've mentioned their company name several times, so technically £40, yep. isn't it? £40 a pop. Yeah. Okay, uh, Matt, um, any other socials? Yeah, the, the Twitch stuff. Um, Friday, James, are you streaming or are you, or are you not streaming? I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Okay. I'll think about it. I'll I'll, I'll tweet about it. Yeah. Okay. okay. J- James might do a stream on Friday. Otherwise, I'm streaming Super Metroid Sunday at half past eight. Uh, Amazon Prime, Twitch Prime, usual stuff. Uh, we really appreciate all the subs. Uh, and patreon.com slash TCGS for exclusive podcasts, early access to our videos. You name it. We've got it on there. Um, and you go to computergameshow.com for everything else. Cool. And uh, we will catch you next week. We hope you've enjoyed this slightly different show. Um, Back to normality next week. And uh, thanks for living it. Goodbye. 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 Matt, when you said <laughs> when you said really appreciate all the subs, for a second I heard it as we're running pretty short on the subs. <laughs> <laughs>